uh, hi folks. Um, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but I, I, uh, if you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. I really can't hear anyone. Okay, it looks like you all can hear me, but I can't hear you guys. Uh, if someone wants to add himself, and then I could make you speak. But I, I can hear, I, it looks like you can hear me, but I can hear you. So who wants to add himself as a speaker? And I can, <laughs> I can add you guys, and then we can start this. Oh, I will try this again. So can anyone add himself as a speaker? Ah, I see you can't. Okay. So if you give me a few minutes, I will shut down this space. Okay, requested. Um, Esama, can you can you speak? Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Okay, damn it, it's fine. All right, so it looks like it's fine. So if you can hear, oh god, your audio is really low. All right, so let's see if we can start it here. I'm, I'm, it just, it still looks bad over here, but we'll just start and hopefully we'll try to make the best out of it. This is not ideal, but let's let's take it on the road. All right, folks. So uh, welcome wherever you are tuning in from to another spaces uh, with me, Kalu Aja. That's my name. And of course, every weekend we try to do a talk about the economy, personal finance, and of course, how it affects your wallet. We want to make it personal to you, right? We pick a topic, how does it affect you uh, personal? There's no bigger topic this week if you are living in Nigeria or have business in Nigeria than the announcement by the president that the subsidy is gone. So lots of folks have focused around the issue of subsidy why what what all that means and also during the week we heard the central bank of nigeria was moving towards this um should we say single interest rate or single exchange rate sorry so what does all that mean what does it mean for your wallet i think it's very important that we first of all understand what those two issues mean i.e the removal of the subsidy and of course the translation to a single uh, exchange rate so to, to be very very simplistic right what is subsidy? Let's start from there. When you say you are subsidizing a price, that means there's a price. But the market cannot pay that price. Or should we say the consumers cannot pay that price. Hence, you subsidize that price so that the consumers can afford the price. Which means that there's a regulated price, a, 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 a federal or a federation regulated price. In Nigeria's case, the retail price you pay at the pumps is regulated. So every filling station all across Nigeria is mandated not to sell above that price. They can go below, but they cannot sell above that price. But that price is lower than the market price of petrol. If the same filling station had gone to buy petrol outside the NNPC system, so wherever you get your PMS, <clears throat> the federal government basically says you must sell your PMS at this price. Let's call that price 100. But if you then get your, your PMS at 200, the federal government will then pay you 100. That's the subsidy, 100. The subsidy has nothing to do with where it is refined or how it is transported or how it is stored. The subsidy really has to do with the regulation of the retail prices. Hence, if you regulate the retail price, <clears throat> you then get a difference between the federal government price and the market price. If you take away the subsidy, what you are simply doing is so you're saying there's no longer a regulated price. So once you remove the regulation of prices, then in essence, there's only one price in the market, i.e. the market price. That's what subsidy removal means. It's the same thing with the central bank and the exchange rate of the Naira. If you fix the exchange rate of the Naira, which is what the central bank has done, which is what we call capital controls, if you fix the exchange rate of the Naira to say one Naira, one dollar is going to give you 464 Naira. If you do that, right, 
what you are essentially saying is that the market price, which is a 750, does no longer apply. That the only price the central bank will buy and sell currency to you is the 454. That's the subsidy. So you are subsidizing it from 750 to 450. So if you say you want to do a single exchange rate, all the, the central bank is saying is that they're going to take away the subsidy. They are going to take away the regulated price, which is that 454, or what we call the NAFEX price. If they take it away, then all you have left is the market price, no more regulated price. So essentially, the strategy or the policy that we're seeing announced is a removal of regulated prices for dollar, uh, for PMS, and there might be more that they're going to take away, right? They're going to take away a lot more than just the prices for, for PMS and for the for dollar. But that's what, essentially what they're saying. So whatever name you call it, that's where you see the argument. It's a price increase. It's a modulation. It's a subsidy price hike. It doesn't matter. Focus on that single, single thing that once you take away the regulation or once you introduce the regulated prices, right, or you take it away, all you have done is to simply say that... That price is now market driven, both for PMS, both for, um, uh, for for dollar. That's essentially where we are right now. So the question now is now, what's the effect on your wallet? Or to be honest, what's the effect on your wallet? Clearly, there's going to be an increase in your cost of living. Because when you say the market price, the market price can go up and the market price can come down. What makes the market price go up and down? has to do with the price, the, the demand and supply. If there is more supply, prices go down. If there's less supply, prices go up. It's that simple. So when PMS today is 500 plus, it's simply because there is no supply. End of story. If the supply of PMS goes up, then the price will come down. The supply of PMS is predicated on the price of crude oil not on the refinery. So again, that the idea that the Dangote refinery is going to reduce or is going to ameliorate the prices of the retail pumps is not really, it's far-fetched. You would remove the shipping, you would remove the demurrage, all those costs associated with bringing in PMS from, say, the Netherlands to Nigeria. That would go away. But the price of PMS is based on the price of crude oil. It doesn't matter whatever price Dangote pays. If he pays in Naira or dollars, it's immaterial. What matters is, is he paying for the PMS, for the crude oil, in a subsidy or not? Which means crude oil today is about, let's just say $80. Is Dangote going to pay $50 or is he going to pay $80? That's the question. It doesn't matter if he pays in Naira or dollars. If you pay, make him pay in Naira and he's buying it at the real price, i.e. $80, then he will refine your PMS at $80 plus. But if you give him a subsidy, then he can refine at that subsidy plus. That's the real determinant of the retail price in Nigeria. The price that Dangote will pay for the internationally priced crude oil. Which means that this subsidy that they say it's gone, it might not be gone depending on what price Dangote pays, right? That's the, 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 the power we have not clear of. What price would he pay? Not the currency, the price. If he pays in dollar or naira, but what price? Is he going to pay at $80 or is he going to pay at a subsidized dollar price? That's really what will determine the final product. Remember, we are taking away the government price and we're allowing the market to determine prices. Market prices go up and down with demand and supply. So right now, there's limited supply because it's only NNPC. Down the road, if more players come in, you might see prices fall down the road. Same thing with the dollar. Dollar is 750 Naira to 1. Not because that's the real exchange rate, but because there's really only one supplier, the Central Bank of Nigeria. And why is there only one supplier? Because the Central Bank of Nigeria has said it wants to buy your dollar at 450 regulated price nobody's going to do that if you if you get those from your cousin in america you go to the street and you sell it for 750 that's what's going on but if the central bank says we are removing the regulated price 
which means the central bank, i.e. the commercial banks, will buy dollars from you at the market price, which is about 750 today, what you would actually see is that there will be an increase in the supply of dollars in the system. And that will make the price of dollars, i.e. the exchange value of dollars, fall. So the devaluation really, ironically, might cause the Naira to gain value. Exactly what the CBN is trying to avoid by fixing. So when you, just imagine if you, have, if you have a child and you tell your child, don't touch the TV. What does the child do? The child touches the television. If you tell a Nigerian, do not hold dollars. All the Nigerians do, they hold dollars. But if you make dollars available to everybody, if you want dollars at the market price, go get it. You will see that there will be a fall in the demand for dollars. Why would I hold dollars if I'm not going to travel? If I'm just staying in, in Nigeria, but I know that if I want to travel in three months or six months, I can even go to an ATM, put my card in, and get dollars from that ATM as long as I am paying the market price. Then why would I want to hold dollars in my dollar account? It doesn't make any sense to just take my Naira, convert it to dollars, and just keep your dollar account earning nothing. It doesn't make any sense. So all the dollar account folks you see will sell their dollar account because they are, it's wasting. It's just there. It's wasting. There ain't no interest from it. It's in a dumb account because the Naira is not properly priced. Simply buying dollars and holding it has been the best investment you could have made in the last eight years. That's why people have kept dumb accounts. If you buy a dollar and you have kept it when dollar was 116 and you sold it when dollar was 750, look at your rate of return. No return beats that. None. And that's why you have dumb accounts and people holding dollars. But if you go to America, nobody holds pounds or euros in America because they can easily get it if they want to travel. The price is not fixed by the Fed because it's not a peg. They don't have a peg. So if you want to buy dollars, you go to your bank, you request, they're giving the price and you pay. Same way if you go to the UK, no one holds dollars. Why would they hold dollars? They don't spend dollars. But if they want dollars, they can go and buy at the market price. The reason why you don't have dollars everywhere in Nigeria is because there is a regulated price for that dollar. If the price was at the market rate, it would be available and only the folks that need dollar would buy or would go get it. So we've talked about the subsidy, what it means. We've said that the, the, the subsidy is really, really, really a removal of regulated prices. We've then talked about the dollar the same way. It's a removal of regular prices. Finally, what does it mean for your wallet? Your costs are going to go up, guys. Sorry. Your costs are going to go up because most of your food is imported. Your PMS for now is imported. That might change. Look at the things you spend money on. Food is 68% of your budget. It's imported, right? Most of it. Um, your rent to build the homes, your the, 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 the iron, uh, the nails, most of those things are imported. Education is local, right? Your teachers are all local here. But the tools, those things you pay for abroad, ACC, professional stuff, is important. The point I'm making, right, the bulk of Nigeria, Nigeria as a whole, exports more than she imports. But if you break down that, that report, we export more crude oil and we import a lot of things that we shouldn't be importing, like sparkling water. That is feeding local inflation because you bring those things in like DST. You guys watch DST, you watch Arsenal. You pay for that in dollars. So once you watch Arsenal, you are importing. That's just the way it works. So if you don't cut down on the import, your costs are going to go up. This means that this is a great opportunity for anyone that wants to do import substitution. Anything you can make locally to avoid the cost of the dollar, they are going to make a profit, right? Which means if there is Milo, there's Milo abroad, there's Milo Nigeria. The Milo in Nigeria is going to cost you less than the Milo abroad because you are making it here and you are avoiding the dollar. So anything at all that you make locally, avoiding you converting to dollars or importing to dollars, that's going to make money for you. So big opportunity there for everyone in terms of import substitution. Your costs are going to go up. No, no mistakes about it. We take us to the final point so we can all talk, right? You cannot, this is to the government of Nigeria, you cannot increase the costs of everybody in Nigeria via the removal of PMS prices and the removal of the dollar exchange rate without giving a safety net. 
and a good safety net is time. You cannot increase cost by 300% in 24 hours. Even in America, it's not done. In any economy, a 300% increase is a shock to the system. And no one can take that shock to the system. It's just not possible. So you either you spread it over time or you increase or reduce that shock by increasing revenues, i.e. the incomes of Nigerians. Either you give Nigerians a tax cut or you increase their salaries. But you simply can't say subsidy is gone, costs go up 300% and it is what it is. That's not going to happen. The economy will grind to a halt. Why? Because people won't have money to spend. All the money you spent this last week buying PMS is money you earmark to buy something else. That other thing is suffering. So if you don't buy food, the farmers suffer because you bought petrol. So you know it's a circle. You earn only a limited amount of money. Economics is a subject of choice. So if you don't buy food and you buy PMS, food suffers. If you don't pay rent and you buy PMS, your landlord suffers. And that's basically uh, my take. So let's get the guys in here. I hope you guys can hear me. So I've got uh, Bright Ibitoye. Bright, what's on your mind? I hope you can speak. Go ahead, sir. Hi, Mr. Kalu. How are you doing? How are you? I am very well. Thank you so much. Oh. Yeah, it's a difficult one, but something that the reality that we have to leave. Bright, let me get your audio to go up a bit. Bright, your audio is kind of low. Can I get your audio to go up a bit? Yeah, can you hear me now? I can hear you, but just louder. Yeah, that would work. I can hear you perfectly, just louder. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, it's a reality we have to live with. But, 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 but my, my, my concern, like you said, um, is there any way that can be relieved? Yes, we have to cut down on certain things that we do. We have to cut down on... Um, 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 but I think that the policy should have gone hard and because, of course, the subsidies are from two ways. Um, you're paying for dollar, you're paying subsidy on dollar at the same time, yeah. you're paying subsidy on, on, on PMS. So, at the end of the day, the two edges sort. Uh, what I expect, um, that if you take out one, then allow the other one to flow. So that, like you said, people can get licenses. So it's only only NMPC because, according to NMPC, they ought to import only thirty percent of what we consume. But then, even if they make it parallel, even if they make both equal now, I don't think anybody will want to import now. And perhaps they want to put to start rolling out his products. But then, before then, I'm sorry. It's just a. It's just. A corner we, 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 I mean, we box ourselves. Yes, we've set it time with that so you're number. Basically, so, so what yes, you think they should have maybe done, they should have done the fuel one and left the, the, the exchange one to run, i.e., remove subsidies. No, 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 no. I want but... two of them to go at the same time. You, un you understand? Because for me, you are taking now the petrol. The dollar is still at 465. Do you understand? If, 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 if you're going to have single, if you're going to have single ray, if you say you're taking out one, you're leaving the other one, there's still room for all these shenanigans that we do in Nigeria. So I expect that this take out the other one so that you can balance the two. So at the end of the day, people who are scared of going to the black market to buy petrol, to import petrol, then come back, ask them to sell it because they are going to say it's going to fall to under official rate and also there's also a fear that maybe when i go to buy now before i come federal government will have increased the the, the well it will still be on the advance for me it's, I, I, it's a, I, I, yes go on you see the thing again yeah it's, it's, the thing again is that we're we are talking about a policy we have not seen that's the other thing again that is difficult for us to talk about right yes, all we are talking about it is based on the pronunciation by the president saying something is gone the NNPC no. has come out. At the N I, I, I watched the NNPC CEO's um, interview in, on our right. It was very detailed. He gave a lot of background. In fact, the channel one, the channel one, the one he did on channel is more detailed than the arrived one. The arrived okay. one is is kind of is kind of muffled. But if you go to channels, the one he did with channels the next uh, the the next day or the evening of that same day, 
you you will see the difference. Yes, the evening of that same day. Is it clear? You know, before we were saying that Dangote is going to get crude oil in Naira, they're going to sell it to him in Naira, which allows the price not to go um, um to go high. But in that interview, he said Dangote is going to buy crude oil like every other person. If Dangote is buying crude oil from like any other but the only difference here this time is that all the other commodities that were allowing to wait away, they're all going to be local. So perhaps that perhaps could act for the asking. There may be perhaps 50 naira different. That's the only thing that's going to be dropped. It's going to drop from the. He said, so, that so, time, so you, all the so he, so he con- <laughs> just, to, just to be clear, so he confirmed that Dangote is going to buy at the market price of PMS. Yes, he's going to buy in dollars. Invariably, that's what he said. Because she won't ask him, how is Dangote getting the crude? Is he going to buy? Is he getting it in Naira? He's going to pay in dollars. He said, of course, it's the same dollar rate that he's getting it. That, he's getting it. that every other person gets it. That's the same way he's going to get it. So, you know, what's going to be the, 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 the difference? He said, the difference might be maybe 50 Naira. He said, but the advantage is that there will be many people doing the same business. Other import that time because we're going to have a single um, um, exchange rate to do that when there is more in the market a lot of people will go and buy people have that will now reduce the price to now start working between when price goes up and when it comes down so that's gotcha. that's so, where it, it, it's so, so, so just to be yeah. clear just just to be clear he's he's confirming that dangote is going to buy at the market price no subsidy um, Yes, at the market price. Yes. So, in, so, uh, in, so that goes back to the point I, I'm, I'm making. To the, the last week, there was a guy that was arguing about he's going to buy in Naira, or it doesn't matter the currency. I also buys. said that. I also said that. Yeah. What, what matters in, is in the, the previous price interview. Is I heard that. Yeah. Okay. So if he, if he's paying full market price, that means subsidy is gone. That what it means. So subsidy is gone. Which means yes. And what what that means is that there's no regulated price anymore. So you can bring in your you can bring in your product and sell at any price you want. You can go lower, yes. you can go higher. So look at it this way. Let me but give you a scenario. Let me put this scenario for you, right? Yes. Um, Julius Berger gets contracts to build roads in Nigeria, right? Right now, yes. Julius Berger is being paid in naira. They want dollars, but they're paid in naira. So what do they do? They export cashew nuts from Nigeria. Abroad, that's how they get their dollars mm. in Julius Berger. So they export cashew nuts. That's Julius Berger. So they would to get, they yeah, get dollars. They get dollars, good. What they why what Berger can do now is to go to take cashew from Nigeria, export it to Vietnam, then go to Chicago and buy PMS or whatever in, in the world and bring it back to Nigeria. Um, back to Nigeria need, with a cheaper rate. Yes, they, they don't need dollars. Right now, the Indians are buying discounted Russian diesel and selling back. That's what I say. I say Dan Gute can do the same thing as exactly. well. Exactly. This is the point we're making. Because and Berger can bring that that PMS into Nigeria and sell at any and price. And sell it at whatever price. To, to get his money. And get his money back. Yeah. So it, 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 gets, it, it, it gets paid 100 million naira. It takes 100 million naira and buys cash out of 100 million naira. It exports it out. It gets dollars. Uses the same dollars to buy di- diesel and it imports the diesel back into Nigeria, and sells for 150 million naira. So it's made 50 million on that yes. trade. Just uh, for example, right? Because right now there is no more regulated price. You can sell higher or lower. So this is the yes. market that we're going to go into. So long term, the market price of crude and trade will determine the price at the pump, not the regulated price. At the pump, yes. Long term, it might be better because remember, Dangote is going to sell other condensates, um, byproducts of the of the of pay of crude oil that would allow him to yes. subsidize his own refinery. So even if he makes a loss on PMS, he makes a profit. On You're getting the from the other side. Yeah, and yeah. this is this goes back to the failure of the of the Nigerian Federation, not federal government federation. When you have crude oil, you yeah. say, well, why can't the poor in Nigeria enjoy cheap petrol? They are right. As a Nigerian, because you live in this country and God has blessed this country with a bonus of crude oil, you should, you should get a subsidy. 
They said petrol is no, but if we had run our refineries properly, we would have made a loss locally on PMS, but covered it up with other byproducts. The Dangote refinery, yes. the Dangote fertilizer plant, quote unquote, should have been NNPC facilities, right? And if they had made profit on fertilizer, yeah. then they would have been able to afford the subsidy. The subsidy is because the Federation has failed to expand yes. the value chain of crude oil. So the subsidy looks looks like a lot. Yeah. There is no economy. I, I challenge anyone. Show me any economy that does not subsidize something for our citizens. There's none. If you go no, but you see, you see, that has always been my argument. And you see, this is one other thing, one other problem I have with the part of Nigeria, this part of the world that I am. You see, when we want to push a narrative, we put push that narrative like that's how it worked in other places. You remember during this COVID, even up to second time, I you remember that Americans, Americans, the British government and all of them were giving rebates on gas, especially during winter. Yeah. They give you a backup for gas. In America, the tax on the PMS and also gas. Isn't it so? What do you call that? Subsidy. What do you call that? All right. Subsidy. Good point. Good point. But you, you see, another thing I also know that this is going to do is that we actually need to know the actual liter we consume in Nigeria. I, we need to know that. We don't need to This thing, again, with this again, thing again, that just happened. Between, we don't need to know that. No one cares. Like, do you want to know how much Cook says? No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. So, first, let me That's ask. what I'm saying. Nobody, yes. the total amount of gala in Nigeria, no one wants to know how much gala is sold in Nigeria. If you can afford it, yeah. go, and, go and pay for it. If Cameroon can afford to pay for NNPC, come and buy. We don't care. Whoever can afford to the buy. NNPC even said that. NNPC even said that what they are trying to do is that now that the prices have been re regulated, that allow to the market to the determine they want to go into those countries to build their own um, terminal so that they can sell, they can export to that same countries by the and and other. And he said on the other two refineries. The one will be ready by December. He didn't mention which one, but he said one of them will be ready by December. The other one will be ready by mid of next year. So, like I said, it's a, it's a circle that we have to go through, but I think this plan will be better than one I will, I will, we will, we will, that we'll okay, be hearing. I, so. I mean, can you remember the 2012, the 2012 um, um, town hall in Lagos? The concept was the four years between 2012 and 2011 there's gonna i think i lost first okay first let first let me pause you i think i lost you all i, mean, I, want, I want to get midi midi in here to to get his perspective as well if you can hear me first i think i lost you let me get midi midi in here to, to get his perspective go ahead sir yeah how are you doing okay good uh okay good evening everybody hey, hey, good evening. um yeah, I would like to speak to this from three angles. Um, the idealistic angle that is uh, from us from way back. And, um, okay, the idealistic angle from for us uh, for where we are now. And the last angle, um, the non-idealistic, the practical angle or the practical uh, probabilities of you know, stuff that can happen, you know, um, if you would, if you go, you know, down memory line, you, you learn, you know that um, as far back as 78, 79, there about, as a country, we would project ahead, you know, that, okay, we're going in population, we'll need uh, probably to add another refinery, that's how we got the Wari one. Uh, that's, how we, that's how we got the first Potakot one, sorry. And uh, later, when Babangi in 89, I mean, ironically, Buhari did that one with uh, Basinger in uh, 77. Then uh, in 89, Babangi felt, okay, we were, we we're growing. We need a bigger, really bigger um, um, refining capacity to meet with the population. And we did the additional, I think, 110 or so. Is it one ten or additional hundred? There about thousand uh, barrels per day uh, for the uh, second Potaka refinery one. You know, so I'm still talking idealistically now. So 
you will expect that for a country of you know talented people, educated people, people who you know had the opportunity of working, traveling, and all that, all the people will see what happens in other countries. You know, you could check people in mean, a country like Singapore that does, you know, like virtually has no oil, refining over 1.5 million barrels per day. Idealistically, you will expect, okay, probably we have all these Shell, Mobile, Chevron, uh, whatever you want to, and all these people. You could task them. You could go into PP, people with them to build refineries. I will say, ideally, idealistically or theoretically, you will expect a country like Nigeria, if you were not a crime scene kind of country, you will expect probably we should be doing all the two million barrels that probably we should be producing, should be refined full. Because you make more money from exporting refined products than selling the crude, pro the crude uh, product. You know, and even at this time, especially the crack spread, the crack spread on uh, refined products is has never been this wide. You know, we could be making a killing, you know, from selling refined products. So that's that's idealistically. But then, be it as it may, we we are not really yeah. probably we're not like we don't smart, but you know, I think me, 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 we. Me, if I could yeah. in here, yeah. that's why I said that the the whole idea of the subsidy. It's a tax by on federation yeah. inefficiency. That's what's going on. It is a what? A tax. We are we are paying a tax mm -hmm. on the inefficiency of the federation. The federal God state bless you. That's what I'm headed for. Yeah, local government. That's basically what exactly. Doing. That's that's why I had to go the the from way back and talk, you know, like idealistically, theoretically. So we are, that's actually just went to where, like my bottom line, where I was headed for. We are paying for the inadequacies or the criminal mindset of our rulers. Yeah. We are meant to be the brunt now. You get it? So it's, we are paying for their own inadequacies, inefficiency, or probably their own uh, criminal ways it's this is what we are paying for largely yeah because I, I will say you know why we're paying for what did you say Hello? yeah i will say why we're paying again for the inadequacies is there is a strong and i'm gonna say strong in capital letters like strong connection between the naira especially for a country like nigeria and the palm price, you know, see, take it for example now, let's talk idealistically a little, you know, let's assume, you know, in 2012, you know, the dollar exchange was at around 140, 150, 160, there about. Now, idealistically, we should be producing, is it a Greek or is it uh, crude oil, is it refined oil, you know, whatever. We should be able able to sustain production that will be able to sustain such exchange rates. Now, imagine, let's assume that we have exchange rate at 150 naira to a dollar, or 200 naira to a dollar, and at that exchange rate, the difference between the official rate and say, like it was, it used to be, some 10, 15 years ago, I mean, during the passenger and whoever now, yeah. We the, the spread between the official rate and the power of market was maybe two naira, three naira, five naira, there about. It shouldn't be more than that. Any cost in any country. Let me ask you a question. Ask you yeah. a question. Why do Go you ahead. think Go ahead. the black market started? Why do you think the black market started? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ask, I'm asking you a question. What do you think? Oh, well, largely because of uh. Fraud? Not really. That's one. No, no, Two, no, no. we're not producing enough. No, not really. Not yeah. really. It's very, very simple. Whenever you see a black market, that means there's no mm. supply. That's yeah. it. Whenever you see a black market, there's no supply. The black market started because there was no supply of the quote-unquote subsidized dollars in Nigeria. I remember I was in school when my mom used to travel I remember it, this, this conversation where she was trying to buy dollars from someone at 7 Naira. Mm -hmm. I remember in my head as a child, mm -hmm. 
and she was completely yeah. bitter that this guy is sending it to her at seven naira mm -hmm. to one dollar. I That's remember true. my head was complaining that she bought it for four naira. Now it's seven naira. It was a, you know, she went on. Well, he's the buyer, sixty-five combo. I'm just telling you what I remember, right? Oh, dollar. Seven naira. Why was she buying it at seven naira instead of the one naira? It was one naira ten combo in CBN. Yeah. One naira yeah. ten combo, but she was buying at uh -huh. seven naira. Why was she buying at seven naira? Uh -huh. Because if you apply at CBN at one naira uh -huh. ten combo, you don't get it. That's why uh -huh. there's a black market. There is no black market for dollar in America, in South Africa, in UK, maybe even in Ghana. There's no black market. Why? So you will you will you will have parallel markets in, in countries or probably people who, who sell dollars, you no, know, outside you can, the you bank. Have a market. But the exchange rates no no no, no. no you, you do have them. Like it's that. in Malaysia, it's in Singapore, it's where in is, Dubai and all the, that. But where is the parallel market in America? Tell me, where is it? What's the name of no, so the, the, no, I'm saying you will have them. No, you wouldn't have in the U.S. You wouldn't have in the U.S. But you have in some... Like, like for example, you have it in UAE. You will have in... Uh, no, no, uh, no, where? You, Singapore. You don't, you, have in, you don't have a parallel market where there is no capital controls. A, a parallel market only comes when there are capital controls. So when the central bank says, if you want 1,000, we'll give you 100, then a black market starts. It's not just for... for Probably we're for saying the people. same thing. Let me just... Let me explain what I'm saying is this. They, their own... Let, let's, let's say, for example, now... Uh, let me think of a country now. Uh, let's take Singapore, for example. If you go to Mustafa in Singapore, it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of black market, right? You buy foreign currencies. But see, the, the point is, the gap between the official rates and the black market or parallel market... Okay, for example, let's say it's 1.25 or 1.35 to a dollar, Singapore dollars, uh, to, to US dollar. Uh, the parallel market is that maybe 1.36, 1.37. Yeah, so, so the question is that why is there a uh -huh. black market? That's the question. You get what I'm saying? Uh -huh. The question is why uh -huh. is there a black market in that country? Why? Yeah, because not everybody will come to the bank to buy dollars. Some people are tourists. Exactly. Right from the bank, you will have the, right from the, from the, from the airport. I mean, like for most countries I've been to, right from the airport, exactly. once you land, you have this exchange. Why is there no there, black market you know? in America? Because America, that's where the dollars come no, from. No, not because that's where dollars come from. Because there, you can walk, you can get dollars online. There's, you don't have to. The market is available to everyone to get in. It is the local currency. Out. It's the local currency. No, no, no. It has nothing to do with local currency. The local currency of the, of of Ecuador. Is dollars. It has no hmm. currency. It has to do that the fact that there is no control. If I want to buy dollars today on my phone from a half year, I can. The currency markets are international. Dollars, euros, pounds, or dollars, they are all convertible. They are all online. If you go to can't do that, you can't buy dollars online. Yuan is not convertible. It has nothing to do with the, with the currency. It's the availability if you want it. That's why there's a black market. You can get it. There's a black market in Nigeria because central bank says if you want dollars at 454, we will give you. But if you actually request, you don't get. Look at the airlines are asking for dollars at 454. See, I'm, I'm not, I'm not um, saying that we have, we have scarcity of dollars. That's, 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 uh, that's, that's the uh, question. Why do you have that's, scarcity? That's, 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 the because we're not producing discussed. enough, we're not earning, we're not earning enough of it, and there's fraud in the system as well. You don't have, and enough. you don't, you don't, and when you don't have refineries as well, how do you get dollars? Because the dollars that you're supposed to have extra in the market, you, you use enough. it to buy refined fuel that you're not supposed to buy in the buy, I mean, imports in the first place. You don't have enough dollars in Nigeria because you want to buy. At 454. If you divide Naira to 800 Naira, all mm. the guys that have dollars in bonds in the US will bring mm. those bonds or those foreign portfolio investments to Nigeria. It's called hot money. 
It's called they will travel. You know why they won't? You know why they won't? You know why it won't happen that way? If the Naira crashes to 2,000 Naira, I will give you just one, one, one simple answer, right? If the Naira is uh, 2,000 Naira to a dollar now, when you have corruption in the system, people are the hem will find a way to... Aha. Uh -huh. It doesn't... You, you See, the market doesn't... It doesn't matter. When Nigeria was in the, in the, in the JP Morgan bond index, mm -hmm. what that meant was that if you buy an emerging bond, you are automatically buying Nigerian bonds. What was the exchange of the Naira? It was very low. The Naira was very strong. Why? Because Nigeria was getting portfolio dollars inflow into Nigeria by yeah, default. Yeah. Do you get it? So the, as the dollars mm -hmm. are coming in, let me give you a clear example. In 20, okay. 2007, 2008, the world experienced a global recession. 07, yeah. 08. The oil yeah. price internationally crashed. The Nigerian GDP went up, not down. Why did it go up? Because we had reserves. Why did we have yeah. reserves? Because the then CBN governor threatened that if anybody tries to even attack the Naira, he will flood the system with dollars and you lose money. And he, people looked at his reserves. The guy had 40 something mil, billion dollars. And the Thirty-seven seven billion dollars. Why can't Emifle do the same thing today? Because people look at his reserve. He has forty. He's owing euro bonds. He's owing China. He's owing every one dollar. So he can't talk. That's why the dollar is going up because there's no. Um, you get the point. If we it? go back to the two thousand and eight um, uh, or two thousand and six seven um, uh -huh. example, can you remember the exchange rate? at the parallel market and the exchange rate at the bank. What was, what was the, what was the arbitrage? Was it just the margin, market? the margin then at most was like 12 Naira. But you could get it. But you could get it, you know. Yeah. So I'm sorry, like, uh, uh, now so when it, you have it, it, people... Again, on your card, remember that it, it was time in Nigeria on your card, on your, on your card, you would travel well, abroad course, yeah. card and spend uh -huh. dollars of how much on your card. There was no restriction. You had a card, you would fly abroad with mm -hmm. your card and spend dollars with your sure. card. Today is $20. No, 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 nothing again. Now, not even $1. You can't spend $1 anymore. On the Be there, let, me, let, 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 me, let me get... Uh, <laughs> I, I, this guy's been waiting patiently. Just hang in there. Let me get Igba. He's been waiting patiently. Don't go anywhere. Okay. Um, Chilflos, hi. Chilflos, how you doing? I've kept you with you. It's your first what you've got the floor. M Mide is still here. All right. But Mide, so, so yeah. I want to, just to make the point mm -hmm. again, so to 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 declare to everyone. Mm. What is happening in Nigeria, what Tinubu wants to do mm -hmm. is to remove the regulated price mm -hmm. on PMS and on, on the currency. If you take away the regulated price, that means there's only one price. There is now only the market price. What drives market price? Demand and supply. So on a policy level, I completely agree with Tunubu. Take away the regulated price. Let free market and the competition affect the prices. But this is where I think he's, he might be getting it maybe wrong. Mm -hmm. You cannot shock the system mm -hmm. with high prices in an economy like Nigeria, yeah. where people earn, still earn mm -hmm. 30,000 naira a month. That's still the it's official I know most people have paid themselves more. But the official minimum wage in Nigeria is still 30,000 naira. Some so people NLC don't even earn 30. Congress. Yeah, it's, it's, it's 30, it's still 30,000. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, two weeks ago, I did a, a, a trend on bank uh -huh. salaries. Uh -huh. I was getting screenshots. This is actual screenshots from uh -huh. folks that were working in a bank. These are uh -huh. guys that are the contract staff. So what happens in the banks is that uh -huh. the banks would outsource, say, a teller to a yeah. third party. Then a third party mm -hmm. would, would hire the teller back to the bank. You have yeah. people working in Nigerian banks earning 46,000 naira net. Definitely. Definitely. That's $3 yeah. a day. The poverty uh -huh. rate across the world is $2 Dollars. a day. So this guy would wear a tie, go to a bank, big bank. This bank is dollar fifty Forbes. actually. Yeah, this, 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 this guy, is, this, this bank is on Forbes. 
but they are paying their tellers three dollars a day. Now that guy earning three dollars a day, how will he afford a three hundred percent increase in petroleum prices? He can't. No he, way. He can't. So what? And he wants him to show up to work. How will the policeman afford um, uh, a three hundred percent? The policeman with a gun. How will he afford? 300% increase in pay. What all they will do is he's going to take his, his dollars, his gun, and demand more uh, from you. When he stops, he's going to tell you to pay him money. He's going to extort therefore, money from you because he can't therefore. afford it. So it's not, we're not being anti, <laughs> we don't hit the, we're giving the president good advice. You have to do two things. Either you give a tax cut to Nigerians or you increase their incomes or you do both. You, you, you can't even do tax cuts because if you do tax cuts, it doesn't go up across board. Like, I, I, well, I, how there many, many people... ways you can do a tax cut? There are many ways okay. you can do it. If you increase, if you reduce the price of food, that's a tax mm -hmm. cut. So if you so say you, do you, you, you reduce, you, you eliminate um, import uses of food for the next 60, uh, 90 okay. or 120 days. Because mm -hmm. The average Nigerian spends 68% of his budget on food. Right. So if you say you can bring in food into Nigeria for the next 30, 90 days at 0%, the price of food will crash. Food is 51% of Nigeria's consumer price index, which means that the inflation you see today at 22% is based on food being expensive. So why is food yeah. expensive? Because the bandits... And the terrorists that are on the, in the middle belt yeah. don't allow farmers to farm. Well, still also, work. There's no, no infrastructure, right, to get the food to the cities. So what you need to do is to have a plan. Immediate plan is going to be drop food prices by importation. Mid-term plan is mm -hmm. when you destroy the bandits, you then start to build out the infrastructure to reduce cost mm -hmm. of locally generated food. Mm -hmm. So a tax cut for Nigeria is going to be lower, cheap, lower food prices. If that guy working in the bank, in quote, is earning mm. his um, 64,000 naira a month, can buy a bag of rice at 5,000 naira. That's a subsidy mm. right there. Plus. But there is no way. If you allow that mm. banker boy to work in a bank to earn his 64K, he will steal the money. And when he's in front of God, if we, he will tell God, God, I was hungry and I stole yeah. money. How would you jail mm. that boy? He didn't steal uh -huh. money to, to buy a cow. He said, I was hungry uh, and I stole money. Uh -huh. How do you jail him? He's, he has the... Let me not talk for the... I'm on, I'm on um, social media. Wale, my brother, how are you doing, sir? Yo, Mr. K, how now? Uh, what's happening? Are you seeing what we're seeing? <laughs> I'm seeing what you're seeing. Hello, everyone. Um, Hello, everyone. Yeah. You know, so you made a point just now about... Um, the government, you know, giving allowances for people to bring in food. You know, and it just occurred to me that, look, if that sort of policy comes on stream, where's the dollars that you're going to give them to import that food? They will have dollars. Well, people have dollars. They don't, need, they don't need CBN dollars. People have dollars. There's dollars in dumb account in Nigeria, 20 billion or so. It's not owned by the CBN. There's dollars abroad. My brother, my brother is, in, in, is in Canada. I'll ask him to, to lend me $1,000. It's not CBN money. <laughs> so he will give me $1,000. I will, I will import, I will import, uh, what will I import? I will import frozen, frozen turkey and frozen fish. $1,000 from Walmart. You, well, you, you know, for me, eh, you know, a lot of all those things are temporary measures. Temporary measures. Well, you know, because they're not things that, not things you know, into the longer term that you can use to sustain. We've tried this thing before. Where yeah. all you know, if the whole thing was open for everybody to bring in stuff, and then at, at some point it becomes a major disincentive to actually do anything in Nigeria. Yeah. I think for me, yeah. eh, you know, and I'm a big pro proponent of. In fact, let me mention something first. This fuel subsidy we keep on talking about, as an example, I even example. think is one of the the smaller things that we're subsidizing as a country. I think the subsidy in Nigeria is for the big men. If you listen to um, what's this guy's name now, Femi Falano, you know, talking a few days ago, he made very valid points about uh, you know about the government, uh, you know, subsidizing everybody. So many things. <laughs> big boys. These things are yeah. for the big men. For me, eh, 
if we uh-huh. if we have a honest a, 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 a honest government if the government says look i want to be honest about this what do they need to do yeah you know this thing they call diaspora funding you know mm-hmm. where you can attract diaspora funding as fdi you know i was doing a bit mm-hmm. of research and i actually wrote an article about this where between 2016 and 19 16 17 18 19 those four years 68 billion US dollars came into Nigeria. And this was yeah. this this is informal kind of money that oh I'm broke, send me money. Oh my mm-hmm. babe, I don't have money. Send mm-hmm. me money. My brother mm-hmm. said, send me money. Mm-hmm. Nothing to really do with you know coming in as core structured money. Now imagine if have, last year was 23 billion. Yeah, now imagine if we have a government that is intentional. And China, India, even Rwanda is doing this thing I'm saying now. Rwanda, 13 million people. You see Rwandese offshore, they cut a certain percentage of their salary and they send it home every blessed month. So what am I saying? You know, the body language of every government tends to dictate how people reflect and see them. All of a sudden, I'm seeing a current uh, speaker of House of Reps He's chief of staff. Mm. I'm saying Ribadu, mm. you recycle them mm. to come and be one thing, one thing. Mm. You know, mm. until we are able to change all that body language, all those body language that look, mm. you're just bringing in the same old, same old. You know, even though this government that has come in came in with 35%, I mean, the lowest, since we started this democracy, the lowest votes recorded by any incumbent. So let's even say that, look, um, for some reason, you know, he's there for now. And he says that, look, I'm ready to do the right thing. The body language will be entirely different from what we're seeing. For me, one, if I, if I look at the subsidies that you guys talked about, for me, one, you don't remove subsidies without plans. You, you don't do okay. There's certain things you don't do. It doesn't make any sense. You know, you also say you want to unify your foreign exchange. You can't. We don't have money. Look, I always say something. Eh? I'm a very big person when it comes to infrastructure. If you look at that document, I've talked about it several NIMP. The that document says we need 2.9 trillion US dollars over a 30 year period. That's an average of about 100 every billion year, US dollars every year. to update our every infrastructure. Year. infrastructure. 100 billion every year to update infrastructure for the next 30 years. Now, this is a country that oil and non-oil. We're currently generating 60, 70 billion. And we're still wasting it away on on, on non-physical things. So, this is where my own problem lies. One, you're broke. You don't have enough money to develop your own infrastructure. Therefore, all this talk of, can we get food in? Can they give away, you know, some tax incentives? They can't. And they won't because they're broke. Now, why don't you as a government, which is why there are certain people that fit certain governments, if you're a manager, you know how to grow revenue. This is the kind of economy you'll be yearning to lead. Why don't we look for ways that we can get monies in, easy, easy way, and start to focus on those infrastructure that can turn around food for us? Like Kalu said, you know, our, our CPI food inflation is, is, is crazy. Why don't we look for things that can help us turn those things around very quickly? Therefore, it brings me back to that, infra- that uh, 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 what's it called now? That diaspora remittance conversation. If we can attack that diaspora remittance conversation in a very, in a structured manner, you know, they are doing it, they are doing all sorts of nonsense now. And people in diaspora don't trust this government. So nobody's ready to put their monies where they, I mean, I, I mean, I won't. If I was in the diaspora, I won't. So, if the body language is right, yeah. why don't we find a way to attract 68 billion per annum and pump we it into do, infrastructure? Well, well, you know, you know, we say this in all the time. When I say, put it on Twitter, they will come and be posting things they don't know about. I've told people before, you can fix exchange rates in day one. I, I've said it before, right? The markets react to the future, to the future. The markets react mm-hmm. to what's going to happen, not mm-hmm. what today, to do yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. And what has happened is that I, 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 I think Tinubu was briefed that we are broke. We were broke since 2015. Mm-hmm. Buhari simply paid the subsidy 
by printing money from the CBN. Yeah. And as he was leaving government, he then made the, made the National Assembly pass that illegal printing as law. So Tinubu knows he might not be able to go there and do it again because everybody's eyes now on ways and means. People's eyes want on ways and means. So he knows he is broke. So I think he made that statement on purpose, right? To see what will happen. And what will happen was what happened. People ran to the, to the fuel pumps to buy fuel at 1,000 Naira. Then NNPC then introduced prices at 500 Naira to also see what will happen. All these things are being done without any legislation. Remember what I said. There is a regulated price. Has the regulated price been removed? Where is the circular? Yeah. Show it to me. There has to be a removal of whatever. To say that, is there a statement saying that in Nigeria today, you can sell fuel at any price? Is there any statement saying that if anybody has it, please send to us? So if you don't do that, that I think there, are, there are, is plausible deniability to say we haven't removed subsidy yet to see what will happen. I want to go back to the CBN. Daily Trust published that CBN has devalued Naira to about 618 or so. See, Central Bank came out and said they have not. I felt that was an error by the CBN. Allow the story to, pl to play out and see what will happen. See what will happen. Whether dollars will flow into Nigeria. Because like you said, Wally, whether I like Nigeria or I don't like Nigeria, if I take a dollar today, let me, let me caveat. Before we had all this Ukraine war thing, if you take a dollar to an American bank, they are paying you 0 0.25 to 0% on your savings. So 0 to 0 0.25 is what American bank will pay you on your savings. Then yeah. Ukraine war has happened, inflation has happened, now they are paying you as high as 4 5% in America. <laughs> to attract an American today, for him to take his money from Apple, Apple is paying 4.5% on your phone to Nigeria. Yeah. Nigeria has to pay that guy at least 10% in dollar. The problem yeah. is that Nigeria can pay that 10% and still make a profit for you. And there's patriotism as well. It is possible to issue, actually issue a loan, a loan at 1%, call it diaspora bond, and Nigerians abroad will still buy because to them it's development. Like you said, we are sending money back for welfare. Welfare. So if you go to, let me give an example. I don't want to be tribal. Most of these guys from the southeast, they build their roads, they build their power from their town unions and their contributions. That's what they do right now, currently. If you pass a law and you say, any money you inflow from abroad, any dollar you inflow from abroad, number one, the federal government of Nigeria will pay the transfer fees of that money. So if you inflow one dollar, you get one dollar to your home state. That home They're doing state something is... like that already or something. No, mm -hmm. who, who bonus? What that like five naira, uh, I think uh, the transfer the, fees CBN. that's to CBN. Uh, I'm saying you, uh -huh. you pay to Western Union, won't you pay the American uh -huh. bank? You pay the American bank now. Number two, mm. that money must be used for distilled areas, must be used maybe roads or power or irrigation. Say where it will be used. So the state government today will go and pass a state, every state going to say, These are my opportunity projects, these are my project opportunity projects that I want to have in my state. Those projects will be assessed. The funds will not go to the state government. It will go to an SPV. You abroad will send money to the SPV. The SPV will build that project on behalf of the state. The same way PFAs work with the federal government to manage federal government money. The same way. So you build a road in Ohafia. You build power in Ohafia at 1% return. I would do it because I am from Nigeria. I'm not looking for the... It's, for me, it's a welfare bond. It's not a bond for me to make money. You will get the money. But again, you said it's trust and competence. I don't have to like Nigeria to invest in Nigeria. I, but I would do it if you give me a pathway. Very, very... There are banks abroad. You can go and buy one cheap country bank in Atlanta. Buy one cheap country bank. How much? Then tell Nigerians in Atlanta, put your dollar in that country bank in Atlanta. We're not transferring dollars. Put your dollars in that bank in Atlanta. In Nigeria, will print mm -hmm. the Naira based mm -hmm. on what that bank in Atlanta has. Yes. You now have a memoranda foreign exchange in Atlanta. Then when you want to, imp eh, 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 you want to import, you will sell them dollars from that bank in Atlanta. Very easy solutions. They make everything look difficult. They, oh, you get license. Money's not moving. The money stays where it is. And there are lots of ways you can do what Wale is saying. 
But again, it's back to this. What would they say? Trust. trust. Back to trust. Yeah, Olimide, yeah trust. Only they want to get in here. Let's hear. Yeah, Olimide, what's up? Yeah, thanks, Carlo. Interesting conversation. I was uh, so intrigued by um, uh, the post speakers, and uh, I wanted to highlight. But I think somebody is echoing. I think we have to move the mic. Uh, okay. Yeah. So first, first of all, uh, if, if you understand the unification of the um, exchange system, it's not to make the naira strong or weak. It's rather to make the market efficient. You know, uh, one of the problems we had. Good point. One of the problems we have about the uh, CBS official uh, exchange rate is that it's the big boys and those that have uh, PT or for me that have access, that has really created a dysfunctional uh, FX market and has put many uh, real uh, pastors in, in, in jeopardy. So first of all, I think it's a good deal. Secondly, uh, I have a problem with remittance. Many of us always talk about yes, Nigeria bring uh, Nigeria brings in, Nigeria diaspora brings in twenty to twenty two billion dollars every year. If you look at numbers that uh, the cost CBN pays on foreign education, medical tourism, for me, I, I I don't have the numbers now, but I recall that just the amount Nigeria spends on foreign education in UK through the Apex Bank will fund basic education in Nigeria. So the question, so is, the question is, the question is, are we subsidizing for the minority at the disadvantage of the majority? Because rich countries subsidize for poor, for their poor citizens to enable the system create that fair opportunity. But in Nigeria, I think um, all the subsidy programs are favored for the upper middle class and the rich. Thirdly, I'm also on the opinion that, see, uh, the president did on the uh, move out of uh, 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 sorry on the speech that he spoke about uh, the education of multiple exchange system. It was spot on because what he, the message is sent to the market uh, has really spurred investment curiosity, and that's why we have seen so much engagement across Nigeria, said, from euro bonds to the local. So the, the continuation is. What does he have to lose right now to uh, uh, to to stop to press the brakes? Press the brakes. I think I think for me, what 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 you should uh, focus more on is ensuring that, ensuring that um, the monetary uh, policy uh, rules align with fiscal policy, fiscal in, policy. The sense that, in the sense that you have to cut leakages or theft. You have to deal with it. That's another That's problem another because problem. Naira, the strength of the Naira depends solely on oil export, not the unification of the exchange rate. So I so, think we need to highlight those problems. Well, 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 sir, let me, and again, let me just make the point again you're, you're emphasizing. The subsidy that we have in Nigeria is enjoyed by the rich, not just individuals. Let me paint a picture for you. How do we pay subsidy? When NNPC sells crude oil, the money is paid to JP Morgan. Then JP Morgan will then credit the bank account of, of CBN slash NNPC. Then the central bank of Nigeria will then go to that account, convert that account from dollars to Naira, and will then credit NNPC, who then <clears throat> who then credits the national the FAC. Let us call it a FAC for now, right? Which means subsidy is paid by the federation federal states and local what does that mean that means that the cars in Lagos state are being paid for by states like jigawa eboi abia that don't have cars so if you drive a car in lagos your subsidy is being paid for by every other resident in every other state irrespective of the fact if they have a car or not that's the, the the funny thing so the poorer states are subsidizing the richer states that have cars because the federation is basically the debiting across the board all the states and local government areas in nigeria to pay for the subsidy so it's a, it's an anti-progressive tax it's a tax on inefficiency we are paying for the inefficiency 
of the federal not paying high fuel prices. So it is good that the subsidy goes. The point is this: no economy can sustain a 200, 300 percent price increase. It's unsustainable. I've given the example: bankers are earning 64,000 naira a month. How will they get to work on Monday if your chat fees have gone two times, three times up? Explain to me like a five-year-old. Give me one bullet point, two bullet points. How that guy will pay for transport and still buy food. So if he works in a bank and he cannot buy food, what will he do? He's going to steal. And that's across the board. You're going to have crime, corruption, because you want to move subsidy. So you don't, you don't kill one problem to have another problem. So take away the subsidy, but you must put in a policy. Not, I don't want to hear PMS um, um, palliative. It has to be a social safety net done for Nigerians. If you are in below a certain amount of money, you must have something that the government pays for. If it's to give everyone below a certain income class a car that can enter bus for free, do it. If it's to be, give them in order to enter buses for free, do it. So that the rich guys that have the jeeps pay the real price of, for petroleum. But well, these guys that work in the bank that are earning 70000 a month, they have a card that they can tap and pay for bus or BRT or whatever. But you simply can't say, because subsidy is corruption, which it is, we're going to take it off. If you have cancer today, cancer is going to kill you. Would you just go to your doctor and doctor says, you have cancer, so as I'm looking at you, we're going to cut you open. No, they will prep you. They will try to go and change your diet. They will say, we're going to give you this special food to eat and then come back in next week or six months for your operation. Why do they prep you? Because if you simply just go into the body immediately, you might actually harm the patient more than the cancer. So we've got to have a policy. We've got to have advisors and ministers that Nigerians can listen to and ask questions and the policy can be permitted. We cannot build or increase prices because the president says subsidy is gone, whether he meant it or not. That's how, we, that's how you run the largest economy in Africa. Naim, how are you doing? El Nassim, I've kept you waiting. So how are you doing, sir? You've got the floor. Nassim, can you hear me? El Nassim Nasser. Olimide, question for you. Nassim, Olimide, I have a question for you. Olimide, I don't know if you can hear me. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. When, the, last week, I was talking to a broker, a big man. He was telling that the market is reacting to the announcements by... Uh, President uh, Tinubu that we're going to equalize interest rates and we're going to remove this idea of we will not pay. So the market prices went up. Of course, the MTN went up because they knew they're going to get their money back. Is that reaction the fact that dividend holders are anticipating a payment of a dividend? Or what I'm asking is this, why should I as a retail Nigerian like what the president said. Break it down for me. What in that statement makes the price of the shares go up? A South African would love it because it means that I'm getting my money out of Nigeria. But if I'm an investor, I bought Cadbury. What in that statement is making the market go up? Very good question. Uh, so, first, to ask a very technical question, uh, look at the Teku side. We have Airtel Africa and we have um, MTN Nigeria. Airtel Africa usually pay in dollars but if you look at the price right now it's suffering correction it's trading at one thousand one hundred seventy five it's no more the uh, most expensive stock and that's probably because a lot of investors used to use it to move funds away from the country you know it has dual listing it's uh, listed in, in legal state uh, uh, sorry on the nigerian stock exchange and also in london uh, stock exchange so what uh, Foreign investors do usually is that they buy and they sell in London. But uh, categorically, from the president's speech, I think what a lot of people uh, 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 saw from the exchange, talking with traders and some retail investors was that they were anticipating the fact that the official exchange will have to be devalued. And definitely the big boys, uh, Tony Lumilu, uh, Femme Tadela, uh, were buying. There were a lot of inside, insiders buying in Q1. So there was already a prep up that uh, there might likely be a bullish uh, run. So um, 
the president's announcement that petrol subsidies have fly out means that competition in the energy sector will come in. And that was why we saw stocks like Connor bringing out uh, monthly gains at 45%. So it's, yes, it's, 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 a, it's a price uh, that says that certain companies will make a lot of money from these policies. And that's what uh, investors are looking at. Uh, but for the unification of the NIA, definitely, it will definitely give uh, banks uh, more upside, you know. Uh, first of all, from the equity side, a lot of investors have really complained the fact that foreign participation is at record low. So that will definitely attract foreign investors coming in. Secondly, uh, we also know that uh, that has also discouraged uh, uh, FX um, loans. Um, getting the much needed effects to the cost of borrowing is definitely up with US interest rates, but that also played a role. So investors are looking at a market driven rate will definitely mean banks can make more and wrap up more deals. So I think for retail investors that position themselves early in energy stocks, they have a lot to smile about. Uh, for banks also, we've seen likes of Zenit and uh, Sterling bringing out 20% uh, monthly in May. I think the rally will sustain, except the fact that we see uh, unrest coming week. Uh, NLC said that they're going to strike. Uh, it probably could uh, give the bull some resource of profit taking on Friday. But stocks that like you mentioned, like Cadbury, I think uh, uh, it's very tricky here because Cadbury at some point uh, fell as low as 12 naira in Q1, but right now it's running close to 17 naira. So uh, what investors are looking at right now is that uh, value stocks might really gain from certain um, upsides, the fact that people will spend more on core items in era like this. Uh, but I think for me, MTN is already at record high. It's now the most valuable stock on the NGX. And um, the problems they have with banks, I think the president will try to solve that. You know, uh, the banks are owing uh, telcos about 120, 20, over 120 billion USDD um, deal. So that will definitely give them some cushion. But you know, uh, Carly, you're a master in the stock market, so you definitely know what happens in the month of June. A lot of uh, critics that say that the month of June oftentimes is when uh, the stock market does bad. You know, data shows that last four years, despite the Nigerian stock market bringing out positive return, the month of June has been very bearish, you know. So it, you, investors have to be cautious. But all eyes on uh, President uh, Tinubu on how he plays out the subsidy with the labor union, how he handles the market or certainty. That, and now we can't that, that, labor dead. that labor thing is dead. I, I, I heard the Northern guys and the Southwest guys have pulled out. So that labor thing is dead. I, I, the labor guys, to me, in my opinion, are like, they are publicity seeking Kim Kardashians. That's what they are in Nigeria. They don't do anything. They wait for like a policy that will give them publicity and they go out to the streets. That's what they are. You don't see, have you seen labor unions going to, to picket banks about paying a, an adult worker 64,000 naira a month? They don't do that. Do you see them picketing banks to say, hey, why can't women have maybe one year of maternity leave? They don't pick real labor issues. They pick all this fuel subsidy thing because they know every, every Nigerian wants lower prices. So they, it helps them to boost their street cred. But what have they done? My earliest memory of labor is Adam Soshomole fighting or Basinger because of Basinger was going to increase fuel price. But the fuel price is still up. Adam Soshomole is a governor. He's now the one asking us to increase fuel prices the more. So it's just, they don't do anything, labor guys. They just look for, oh, now fuel has gone up. People don't like fuel price. Let's do a strike. Where were they for eight years when 31 trillion was printed? Where, 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 where were they? Where billions were borrowed that the, that the workers are going to pay back with higher taxes. Where were they? So that labor thing to me is it will fizzle out and to go up to bed. But let me let me ask you, Lumide, let's come to the, the the title says subsidies, devaluation, and your wallet. If I subsidize, i.e., I remove the, the legal price, prices of PMS and dollar, which is subsidy and devaluation, go up. It affects my wallet negatively. So I pay more for petrol. I pay more for anything imported. So my wallet suffers, Abi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, this is my question. So if my wallet is suffering, I wondered what, what the stock market was rallying for. Because yeah, so... 
I, yeah, I, so I, you you made positive points about the banks rallying because they are going to have apex convergence, oil and gas rallying because there's going to be more competition. I get that. And when I meant Cadbury, I meant the boring everyday retail stock that Nestle, Cadbury, those everyday stocks, ABC Transport. So I'm wondering if the economy is not set up for a massive shock because Tunubu is inheriting a, a broke federal government. The government is broke. There's no more it, ways and means. It, it is broke. yeah, but but good point. But you need to also understand the fact that the stock market is highly localized, and one of the reasons why uh, is running right now is that investors believe that unification of the exchange system will definitely bring in FPI, and also you also need to look at that many top stocks in Nigeria are largely owned by a few entities. Like if you look at Gerigo Power, for example, or Tedala owns about 95%. If you look at Nestle, for example, uh, it's majorly owned by the multinational. If you look at the Zenith, for example, Jimovia has more than 15%. So the 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 reality is that Nigeria's uh, Nigeria as a country's participation in the stock market is very low. So I think what the world are really looking at is the guys from the other side coming in. Then um, also very good point you said, but I, I think uh, also investors are betting that if the government stimulates the economy, uh, if the government stimulates the economy, definitely there will be more economic activities because what the market really wants is boosters and confidence that players can come in right now, despite your concerns. Okay, so and again, if we go back to the to the whole Nigerian picture, the president sits down and he's given a briefing of his balance sheet. On his asset size, he has lots of opportunities. He has LLNG, he has NNPC, he has diaspora taxes. These are like things he can do. But the reality on his liability side is that he's owing a lot of money. He's, he can, they, I heard they can't even pay June. They're going to delay June salaries for federal government. I heard a report about that. So he's owing a lot. In his, in his manifesto, he says he was going to do to decouple the price and, and Wally, you can help in if you have the answer. He, he says going to decouple yeah. the crude oil price from the budget, which means that his budget speech is, is not going to have benchmark. If it doesn't have a benchmark, that means if we sell oil for eighty naira, eighty dollars, we're going to spend eighty dollars. There is no excess crude again. That's going to go. Then I'm going to spend more and borrow more. And he also said I'm going to print more. He also said in that manifesto, you know, we did it here. People didn't listen. We, did, we analyzed the manifesto of the three guys here. He said he's going to fix the price, which is in contrast to what I'm seeing now. He said he was going to fix the prices of agricultural products, which I, I heard him say, and also for petrol and the currency. So in his manifesto, he says something about fixing the price of the currency for agricultural products. But now I'm hearing him say, there's going to be a full devaluation. They haven't said it yet, but I'm hearing there's going to be a devaluation. So, it, it, for me, this is why I want the cabinet to be announced. I want the advisors or the economic team to be announced very, very early. The Ni Nigeria needs a minister of finance or con uh, that is going to be like an Ngozi or Kondri Ewala plus a Shade Aldu put together. Confidence, smart, that people can follow and say, even though they work for the president, we can believe what they are saying. I mean, Wale has made the point. If you bring in the same cast of characters that we had, National Assembly, the guy that is your house, your your guy, your guy that is your secretary, is the one that rubber stamped the the printing of thirty one trillion. That guy, the one that is your head of service, signed off on the massive borrowing of the past administration. That's the guy that's not going to run your office. So, <laughs> Wally, what's your take? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. you know, the, the first thing I always say, uh, Kalu, is <sighs> <laughs> government, ideally, should always think about the 200 million plus people that they're meant to govern over. You see, when I hear a lot of all of this... Um, stock issues, you know, the, 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 the current players, all of these guys, in my views, are in the vast minority 
of what we're talking about. You know, we have data that says 120, 130 million Nigerians, you know, live on some, uh, what's it called now? 30,000, 35,000 Naira, you know, per month. That same data also says very, very clearly that only 3.7% of Nigerians can spend 150,000 Naira and above. Ladies and gentlemen, look. Wale, say that again. Time, Wale, say it again. Put it in here at the back. Say that how I, much they can I, spend. <laughs> There's data. You know, this was, it was done by the World Bank. It says that only 3.7% of Nigerians can spend above 150,000 Naira and above per month. 3.7% can spend that amount per month. It is ridiculous. Now, if you want to govern that kind of system, my brother, which is why I keep on harping about infrastructure, the first thing you need to do is cut off all the excess fat. You know, there's so much... You see, I saw one governor, you know, uh, you, 20 car convoy. Lexus, you know, I see Lexus. all this, all this nonsense paraphernalia, you, you know, NAS or whatever it is, says exit package 30 billion naira. You know, I see all sorts of nonsense Waste. in the polity. Waste. And, it, you know, these things just irk me. And in my mind, the reality that I know is that these guys are not ready to do anything about the current state of Nigeria. I can bet with anybody, my bottom dollar. Look, if, 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 if you want to do something, if you're in that kind of... I mean, look at the scenario I've painted. We're a very poor country. If you want to do anything in that kind of system, the first people that you should give recourse to are those 120, 130 million people. How are they meant to survive? You know, which is why a lot of us are saying you will take out subsidy, but you must do it in a calculated manner. Look, I think I need to encourage guys. Google NIIMP. That document is online. It was done in 2013. Uh, we, we went to the... We, went, we presented it to Jonathan in 2014. And I think it was signed into law because... Um, this there's this ministry that warehouses it now. If you Google it, you will see it's there. The thing is online. It's there. Until we face that document, because all of this monetary policy we talk about day in, day out, monetary policies will never, ever get us out of the doldrums. We must balance it with the fiscal. Now, my challenge is over the last 40, 50 years, we have ignored that fiscal side of things. That's why whenever it rains, we see all, all sorts of dams you know, going, you know, everything busting, which, which, which also affects agriculture. We see, you know, farming produce, all of those things. People don't understand that once you zoom out and you look at the bigger picture, picture. the bigger picture says we must invest in our fiscal side. They have refused to do that. To do that. So if you've look, looked at Nigeria's budgeting over the years, you will always see, you know, recurrent no, expenditure very high. You will see capital expenditure small, and I'm wondering, I'm wondering how can you build a nation on this kind of lopsided budgeting? We've done it for years. It's not just this, not just uh, this uh, you know, last few years. We've been doing this thing for years, and the thing has come home to roost. Oh, as far as I'm concerned, now this is the time, and that's why I, I go back and I keep on saying, where are the easy ways to get some amount of money? Invest it in infrastructure that can help us turn around things. Look, like Kalu, you always say something. If, in fact, the Yoruba people have this saying that if you take food out of a man's problem, you've solved the bulk of his problem. The challenge is that Nigerians are hungry. You know, all, all this bougie talk that we do on Twitter is all fake. The bulk of Nigerians are hungry, very hungry at that. So, I always say, as a government, why don't you address this issue first? You know, how can we get in a lot of money, pump it into that food sector, turn around things, you will employ a lot of people. 
you That's will the optics, create right? the right kind of talkability, you will create the right kind of camaraderie with the bulk of the citizens overnight. Why is well, it well, anybody it goes saying also, this? It's all, it goes also back to the optics, the optics of government, right? You know, we and I don't want to get political, but we have to talk a bit, you know. When you get elected with the lowest number of votes ever, I had this, this start that more, I didn't want to go there. You have to do quick things. There have to be the optics that you are working for the man on the street. You know, all I've seen in last week, I saw the guy going to work in this new bands i saw them having their meeting i don't feel the urgency on twitter i saw this silly argument someone was saying that you have to wait for national assembly to be in session before you can appoint ministers jesus h christ listen you can appoint you can announce who you want to be your economic team at any time their confirmation is a different matter entirely announce the team we've got, we, we we just left a president that didn't announce a team i will saw how that went announce your team the media guys the petroleum guys let them be the ones to drive policy then you know you are asking people to cut down and or their wallets to pay for <laughs> for expensive pms but your official car is this massive imported mercedes-benz please though i'm not asking you to enter innocent or to enter keke i'm just saying the optics when you do policy, think about the optics. Oh, Wally just said that only 3% of Nigerians can afford to spend more than 175,000 naira a month. Convert 175,000 naira a month to dollars. That's how much only 3% can spend. Yet, fuel prices have gone up three times. How are they going to pay? All the folks on Twitter are saying it's a good call. I agree. I've told you. Subsidy must go. But you cannot take a cancer patient. Let me put it a better way. If you have malaria, they give you tablets. They tell you to take four now, take four tomorrow, take four the next day. There is, there, you can hardly find malaria medicine that says take everything at the same time. Just take all the whole 20 tablets, put it in your mouth and drink water because you've got malaria. You've got to have a plan. You've got to, and time is a plan. If you announce and you say, we are going to take away fuel subsidy and we are going to do it over four years, it's going to be 20% every year, Dangote will come on stream, that will reduce the pressure. Other guys are going to come on stream, that will reduce the pressure as well. We are going to increase minimum wages. We are going to do the infrastructure. So people start to see, okay, I'm going to suffer in quotes for three months and hopefully it's going to get better. But if you simply say, uh, it's, oh, it, it, it's gone. You might run into turbulence that you didn't plan for, and turbulence is a big, 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 big problem, right? Mide, what's your, your what's your take on this? Yeah, um, so, basically. Okay. Oh, okay. Go for it. Am I to go? Okay. All right. All right. Um, basically, you and uh, Wale, that you both. Uh, Spoken to most things I would want to say, I'll talk about. If you're telling me to save, you're telling me to starve or probably fast, but you are eating fat. You know, you can't be eating fat while you're telling me to fast. It's, it's not going to work. Like optics you mentioned, what cuts, like what you also mentioned, what cuts is the government making, both the executive, the, the legislative uh, and all that? What cuts are they making? You just spent 14 billion naira to refurnish the uh, refurnish Astor Rock, and you're asking people that you, I mean, how do you tell the common man on the street that you don't have money? I mean, we have to save because we don't have money, but then you can spend 14 billion on furniture. The old ones there, well, aren't are they bad? Every year you have to buy new furniture, you have to buy new uten kitchen uh, utensils. You spent over 21 billion naira for Asaro Clinic alone when people can't even access primary health care. So you know, in so defense, in their defense, media, they, that, that's, that's the old yeah. government, right? In their defense, that's the old government that's living, right? So, yeah, this is a new government. It's a, it's a gov any government on an economic side will do better than the Buhari administration. Any, if, if you put a stone frog, as the president, it will do better economically 
than the Buhari administration. Any government will do better. So these guys are going to be better than what we had in the past. And, and they're going to have, you know... And better. there's one thing that I want to chip in. We don't even know the, the like, to be very honest, we don't know, I mean, of course, it's, it's, there's a lot of shenanigans, scam and fraud going on in that, in that um, uh, angle. We don't know how much we truly consume. You know... Again, like I've said, I, like I've said, it doesn't uh -huh. matter. We don't know in the past, and going forward, we sh it shouldn't really you matter. Know. No, I mean, in the past, matter. yeah, for the past, it mattered in the past. Going forward, it doesn't matter. I mean, so far, we're not paying subsidies, it won't matter. But yeah. in the past, if we're going to be paying subsidies, for example, if we're taking 20% or going to say, let's say, we're paying 50% subsidy, you know, and we will we'll, we'll be, I mean, if we're paying 50% subsidy, it matters. If we're not going to be paying subsidy at all, it doesn't matter if, you know, even if we consume 100 million liters every day, you know. So the numbers would matter if we will, even if you're going to be paying 10% subsidy, it will matter. The same thing goes with the, well, with the, so, with the exchange and, rates. And again, just for, just for put to be clear, hmm. as long as we are paying full price for the crude oil, Subsidy has gone. Yeah, it's um, yeah, yeah, that is us. Yeah, sure. I, I want to get, I, I want to get Niam in here. Niam, I, I, Nasir, uh, Mr. Nasir, how are you doing? Um, Mr. Kalu, good evening, and everyone on, yeah. on this page. What, yeah. What's happening? Where, where are you calling yeah. from, sir? Um, from Kaduna State. How is Kaduna? Uh, Kaduna is um cool, and cloudy. How we have fuel, but it's expensive. You go to the filling station, and um, the fuel is there, but there are no people. It's called the free market. Wow, this is not the kind of free market we expect. We expect, and what it should have been. Uh, yes. Well, um, on on what you just called the free market, let me begin with that. First of all, I believe, Mister Kalu, we are always pushing for capitalism on the side of the masses, while we are always calling for socialism towards the rich. And um, this a kind of tells us as if we are not practicing democracy but oligarchy, that is government of the rich. On that, on economic, uh, uh, sorry to use the word, there seems to be a kind of shallow understanding on the side of our leaders regarding what subsidy is all about. You know, after the Great Depression, when things from um, arguing that government really needs to come in for regulatory measures against the classical doctrine that we should have a full free market where only the uh, market forces of demand and supply determine economic happiness. And you begin to, under, uh, to realize one thing. One of the most pioneering work of Keynes was what? Effective demand. Because at the end of it, when uh, Keynes was propagating for transfer payments and we, through which governments can come in to boost, uh, to boost effective demand and uh, against the understanding of, of major economies today that Keynes had, uh, was more like a proponent of ag aggregate demand, whereas in reality he was a proponent of effective demand. And the bottom line I'm trying to talk about here is one, when you see you are subsidizing anything, anything in a country, particularly on the side of public goods, where you can discriminate and all. For a country like Nigeria, we are not supposed to adopt that kind of shallow understanding of what subsidy has been traditionally. Because for, uh, for a new leader coming in in the day of his immigration, I expected that there should have been a proper planning, not to be so fast on aligning with the idea of removing subsidies. Yes, the main idea of removing it is what to cut with. Is that not, Mr. Galu? Mm -hmm, yeah. And I had a lot of people here arguing that when you look at, but why is it that the government is not thinking about reducing cost of governance? So this portrays the point that it seems we are, pra we, are, uh, we are practicing socialism for the rich and capitalism for the poor. 
that the masses should just go whatever the market outcome is, go and suit yourself. Look at the bailout comes to bank. Take it from 2007 to this. Look at the billions that have been given to banks. And yes, there is the economic argument that when the financial sector fails and all. Yes, also here, when prices rise, when we have inflation, cost of living increases. So you begin to understand that we have a kind of a shallow or narrow understanding of how this thing should properly be done. And this is what stops me. In a country that heavily relies on imports, you just come without punitive measures on ground, without proper plan. How are we reduce how are we going to reduce the cost of living on Nigerians? All of these plans are not on ground. And the other time you're talking about the labor, to me, we don't even have a union that is here to protect Nigerians. Because they only come to make noise and they get away with it, and that's all. But what we are talking about is what happens to the cost of living of Nigeria. And what we are having uh, now and what we have been having in the past is always trying to survive, having reactionary arrangements, not proactive measures. It is a general principle that the cost of living of uh, that the standard of living of a country depends on the amount of goods and services it produces. So the essence now is even if you remove subsidy, where are you taking the funds? Are you trying to boost uh, economic happenings? Are, are we trying to increase production so that at the end of the day, the price at which, for instance, let's say rice or some domestic consumables. If it be that, okay, we are going to spend less on domestic consumables, even if we are spending more on PMS now, it is going to be a kind of less, but it seems we are spending more on almost everything as a result of removing the subject. So what is it truly that the government has done? Yeah, I mean, thank you very much. Again, you see, that's the point. That's the point we're talking about subsidy in Nigeria because we don't have any policy in front of us. The only policy we have mm. in front of us is the is the president's um, statement at inauguration and the NNPC guy's clarification. But we don't have a policy to go by. We don't know if they've removed the regulation. We don't really know. Maybe I wished we we got a bit more context. But what we know is our prices have gone up. Prices have gone mm. up. So that's what we know. So and so, like you said. It's very interesting what you said that the, the, the stations have got product, but because it's expensive, nobody's buying. Yeah. So who will blink first? Will the consumers be forced to buy? They cannot. They have no money. The consumers don't have any money. Wale has said that only 3% and above 175000 a month, which means the guy with, with the SUVs are going to buy petrol, but nobody's going to buy. And this is what I said, the economy will grind to a halt. Not because the economy is going to go through riot or two, but because there is no money. Nobody can afford the goods and services. The economy is many small wheels turning. If people in Kaduna are not buying petrol, you bet yourself that people in Abia, in Eboi, in Joss, in Oyo are not buying as well. So there's going to be a problem. You've got to stimulate consumption. If there's no consumption, there's no economy. If you take away the money you will use to buy food, to buy fuel, then what kind of economy are you building? It's an interesting dilemma we're going to have to sort out going forward. That's what's going to happen. Mr. Biyam, uh, I've got Biyam Yakub. Is that? Mr. Yakubu, you've got the uh, yes, Mr. Yeah, How are you Mr. doing? Kalu, good. Yeah, good evening. I'm good. I'm good. Um, <clears throat> good evening, everyone. I think I'm... Um, Apart from what everybody has said, is just that uh, for me, I have a bit of a divergent opinion in some of these things. Some of us were saying, uh, I, I wouldn't, um, you gave an analogy of uh, somebody taking malaria. I would have loved you to use uh, a cancer patient. Where yeah, let's do cancer now. Let's do cancer. Yes. yes. If it somebody has, has cancer and yes. walks into the statistic. cancer station, what happens? What I'm saying, it has reached a certain stage that you need to take off a, that particular part before you commence, uh, or maybe a chemo or whatsoever. That's basically what is happening to subsidy. I agree absolutely that some measures should be have been put in place to actually caution the effect. 
But for me, maybe people saying staged remover, I don't buy that idea. We've been talking about this for long. We've been saying this for long. And then nobody has had, had that, um, should I say, the will to actually do it outrightly. Because, Mr. Kalu, in fact, after this particular remover, I personally went deep down to find out some of the facts, what some of the things that are happening. I almost cried for this country. Forget, we should forget some of these things and whatsoever. But honestly, there are things that are happening that is beyond what we we'll ever comprehend. Honestly, right? Um, I think, is it, was it Mr. Wally or so that made mention of uh, people cannot afford to, or is it cannot afford or people cannot spend 150000 in a month? Maybe only 3% or so. They can't spend. They can't spend. Yeah, they can't spend. You know, they can't spend. It's actually, for me, it's, it's a vague statement. I have and I can't spend. Probably, I'm not the kind of person that spends. What he's oh, saying is that I they don't, don't earn it. enough to spend. It's not. A, it's, it's, it's actually exactly. research. It's, it's documented research. It's now, not... It's... So, what I'm saying, yeah, I'm just telling you some of these things. Like, I personally... I was um, engaged in one or two, um, not really research, but some projects that was done by CBN in financial inclusion. And, and I came to see some things realistically that I realized that, look, some of us just get data from somewhere and just just post and then... Bro, maybe bro, this data get... is from Nigerian Bureau of Statistics. It's not fake data. I can send it to you. There are lots of other no, 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 data no. That, that support Mr. this Mr. one. For instance, no, yeah, no, let Mr. me, don't, don't, don't like, the, 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 do you know how many Nigerians have more than 100,000 in their bank account or 500,000 in their bank account? There are many data that support this one. This is just one part of many data. It, we, don't, we don't have consumable capital in Nigeria. We don't. So uh, let, let's leave okay, that alone and make your point. We don't have, the data is so, factual. Yeah. Are you saying we don't have data or? That is your the data is factual see. that many Nigerians cannot afford to spend more than a hundred and five thousand naira a month because they don't earn as much. I've showed you bank okay. employees earning seventy four thousand. It's factual okay, Mr. data. Ka Mr. Mr. Kalu, Mr. Kalu, I will tell you, I stayed in Abuja. Anybody that knows when, um, just I, I want to give people some instances. The anybody that knows Guarimpa, the Tipa garage that got burnt in Guarimpa, right? There was a Tipa, it was actually meant to be like a rail line, but people went there and started selling because the rails are not working in inside Guarimpa on Third Avenue. Believe me, you the people, the money that got burnt inside people's shops unbanked, unbanked is almost three billion. It doesn't mean and anything. You are making conjecture no, without that. It doesn't. If I go to o Obalende, there are Rolls yeah. Royce in Obalende. Would I then say Obalende and guys can afford Rolls Royce? It doesn't make any sense what you're saying, sir. The data. No, 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 no. From Mr. Mr. Kalu, Mr. Kalu, Mr. Kalu, I, I, I'm the kind of person that I don't just go and buy and leave. I stay there and I discuss. I am telling you people that actually can have money. I can beat my chest and tell you. I earn at least 500 or above monthly, but some most of them can bust, can beat their chest and tell me that they My brother, have, they are why do you think food. rice is sold in 5 kg? Why do you think oil is sold in, 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 in sachets? Why do you think all you that see, is happening in the economy? Why do you think so? Okay, Mr. Mr. Kalu, if you want to do that, you, I am very sure you must have read about the lost decade in, ja in Japan. Do you have when friends? They were from people, oh, do you hold have hold any hold friend? Me. You? Do you have yes. any friend yes. that has yes. bought a brand new car that was not bought yes. by his company or by his employer that took his own yes. revenues and bought a brand yes. new car in Nigeria in the last eight years? Do you know anybody? Yes. Not company car? Yes. 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 How many Sorry? do you know? No, no, I know a couple of them. A of them? Because they were, they, 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 yeah, they got financing and they were paid. They were repaid. I didn't say financing. That's right? what, what I'm asking you. Do you know, Nigeria doesn't have financing. Do you know any Nigerian that no, no, bought no, no. a car in the last eight years? Okay, if you, uh, maybe if you really know the really banking know sector in Nigeria. 
you understand they tax some people as no, we're gonna move on low we're gonna move on no no no, no. mr Kalu, mr Kalu, can, can you allow me land on this please allow me land. they tax some people as low credit uh, low low risk people because of the kind of agencies they work and they can give you financing in the banks people take that it, it, it's aggregation and I, I agree but people get those things people have been offered we know we know all these things like i said I agree there must be um, some things must be put in place to cushion some of the effect, anticipated effect of the removal. But like I said, the way we were looking at it, saying it should be a stage remover, honestly, I don't agree with that or I don't believe that should be done because this thing has actually eaten up deep, deep. The issue is not only Nigerians that are getting this thing. Neighboring okay. poor countries. Being, I think, that are uh, let, let me just make this point. I, I hear you. I hear you. I get the point you're making. You are saying that you agree with the subsidy removal, but it should not be staged. I, see, the, the point I'm making is this: there is no one you would find here that doesn't want subsidies to go away. No one. But the point right. you must understand is that Nigerians do not earn the average wage in Nigeria officially is thirty thousand naira a month. There are yes. tons of data to show. That Nigerians do cannot afford a three hundred percent shock. There is no financial person you can speak to that will tell you that in any economy, forget Nigeria, in any economy, you can increase prices by a hundred percent overnight, and that makes sense. In any economy, even credit economies, Nigerians do not have credit. The average Nigerian spends cash. Which means if they earn 10 Naira, they have to spend 10 Naira. If you increase fuel by 100%, all you are doing is telling that Nigerian to do a choice between food and fuel. That's all we are saying. We are not arguing with you. The reality, go out to the streets. If there was money in Nigeria, you won't see sachet rice. You won't see sachet toothpaste. You won't see sachet all that nonsense. There is sachet because people can't afford it. That's why it's there. How much is Naira money paying? The federal government is paying people. How much are they paying for Naira money? Why are they not paying 1 million Naira money? What's the salary of a police sergeant that has an AK-47 on the streets? What is salary? Is it up to 200,000 Naira? Convert 200,000 Naira to dollars and tell me what that is. So let's not make arguments because we want to... Defend the government. No, I'm, I, I don't, don't want to make, make a I'm political. Not argument, I don't, this, see, I'm, whether you no, be I, 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 I'll let you speak. Whether you support okay. Tinubu or don't support Tinubu, economics does not care. Economics will happen to everybody. If you go to that position today, you are going to pay five hundred naira plus, irrespective of the political sticker you have on your car. If you have that money, God bless you. Let's take, let's get Chidi in here. Chi Diego V. Did I get that name right? Uh, Chidio Gov. Hey, how are you doing, sir? What's up? Triple H. Sorry, so about, sorry. That, guys. sorry about that, guys. It's Chidio Gov, actually. I, I don't really have much. I just actually wanted to talk about what Billy Amin was saying. And it's not much. Because he's talking about a very small fraction of things. about a very small country. country. I, I stay in Ikodu, for instance, now. I can say, okay, in the part of the COVID, there are people who make this one through a month. Maybe they make over half a million. Now, is that a population? Is that representative of the population? Is that sample size enough? Talk about what we, the rest of Nigerians, are going through. We need this cushion. We need subsidy of a form or the other. There are spaces that have addressed the fact that, okay, yes, you want to take out the fuel subsidy because you feel that some people are taking fuel across the borders to some other countries and are funding other economies, which is actually very true. It's happening. We have been seeing the effect in other countries now that the subsidies have been removed. But then you coming to say, oh, take it off immediately. Everywhere will be good. Everyone will be fine. There are a lot of people I know that earn less than 100,000. If they're spending 40,000 per month, on transportation, now it's doubled. 
and they're earning less than a hundred thousand. Now you can imagine what they're going through. So I don't exactly. Think... You, don't, you don't need a max wizard to know you, that. You don't need a magician to tell you this. This is, this is a fact. It's I'm living it. Yeah, I'm but, but are we are we really having a discussion if Nigerians can afford it? Come on, that's not a discussion to have. Everybody on this space, everybody on this space knows this. I once asked people, how much do you pay your cook? I said, don't answer. Just tell me how much you pay your cook or your driver or your housemate. Do you pay them less than two dollars a day? And don't answer. Just ask yourself that question. <laughs> Do you pay your cook, your driver, your mate more than that two dollars a day in this Nigeria? We know the answer to this. Why we? Leave? This is not an argument to have now. This country has got the richest black man on earth, Dangote, in this country. Does it mean that in Kano there are no poor people in Kano? That's his argument. So if we go to if we look at Dangote's, we say because he's a billionaire, then we should increase the price of fuel because Dangote can afford it. No. The lowest common multiple is where the society goes to. The government exists for those that cannot exist in a fair market. That's what the government does. That's why they have Obamacare. America has the best care in the world, but they have Obamacare because if you can't afford medical care, then you get health insurance support. In this same America, they subsidize diesel for farmers. Farmers have their own diesel, different color. They color it they subsidize more than just diesel. They subsidize quite a lot of things for them. We should remove we should remove the, uh, is the prices in, you can't whatever policy you want to do the point I'm making is that there is no economy on earth or any two hundred percent price increase immediately. Forget Nigeria, forget whatever. A two hundred percent increase immediately is not sustainable. It's not. Salut, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, Kalu? How are you doing? I did, Salu. I did. Is that, you know, Nigeria is just... This case is like putting the light at the, end, at the end of the tunnel. And I'm wondering, why can't the light come in front of the tunnel or before the tunnel? For example, subsidy was removed without palliatives. And this is over one week. And, and nobody can say categorically that this, this and that are the advantages or disadvantages that or are the things that government is going to do to actually mitigate the effect of subsidy removal. And one thing about petrol is that petrol is a common denominator. Petrol doesn't just affect cars because most people are just looking at it as oh, it's people that have V8, people that have these cars. No, petrol affects almost everything in the market and the price of things are going up at astronomically. So as much as we are in support of, or I am in support of subsidy removal, but then I believe that there should be a way in which subsidy should be removed, and it should be done in the right way. By now, palliatives should start rolling in. Nigerians should be able to should be sure of the things that they are going to enjoy. So let that light that they plan to bring, let us bring that light in first. Let us do first thing first. Roll out palliatives and remove subsidy. So Not remove light, subsidy and the light come to the beginning of the tunnel. No, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to use that that line. So you want the the, the, the say, Sally. You want the lights at the beginning of the tunnel, not at the end of the tunnel. Very interesting. And you, you see, your point is valid. I mean, where I've not heard anyone in the last week say they are against subsidy removal. Only NLC is against subsidy removal. So subsidy has got to go, but it has to go in a planned manner with palliatives. I don't. I don't want fuel subsidy palliatives. I want a social safety net to say if you do not earn money if you are young if you are infirm then the state will protect you it will nigeria is a very very costs are still low so you can afford to pay people a certain amount of money based on where they live based on how they spend and they can get by but you just can't if you go to my village and you say we're going to increase fuel price by 100 percent, how are they going to afford it where do they earn who will they charge 100 percent to cover that increase in fuel price 100 percent and my village is like your village. So think about the guy in your village. How will the guy in your village be able to afford it? Uh, Abdul, I've got you in. Abdul Osman. What's yeah. Uh, <clears throat> hi, Carlo. Uh, good evening, everyone. Hey, what's up? <clears throat> yeah, so um, th this space is really important for, for everyone because it's, it's for us to look at all the sides of the arguments, you know, try to dispel the propagandas. And people that are trying to gaslight Nigerians. So this space is really important for those purposes. Um, 
So my my own angle is I, I think majority of us on this space on uh, agree that uh, subsidy is is a waste in the manner in which it's been uh, implemented. So th- that that that's fine. Well, so if subsidy is a waste, then uh, how do we address that waste? Because that then means that subsidy is not the problem but the manner in which the subsidy is being implemented that is the problem so uh, some of the argument is that subsidy is benefiting a few rich nigerians uh first of all the only people complaining so far are the ad, uh, average nigerians I, I don't see any rich nigerian fighting at the first station it's still the average nigerian so secondly if we are saying that um th- this subsidy now should be taken off because there is wastage and it's benefiting a few does that then mean that now that we have taken this uh subsidy away does that mean that automatically uh, there are no more uh avenues in the government that benefits a few rich and does that then mean that automatically all the wastages in the government has automatically stopped? So wow. this is the angle I want Nigerians to come from. We shouldn't see subsidy as a bad thing. We are blessed with oil. Why shouldn't we enjoy it? Why should we go broke trying to pay for something we are blessed with? doesn't make any sense. Majority of the countries that are blessed with oil worldwide, they subsidize uh, their the economy. Most recently, uh, UK had to subsidize their, their citizens when the energy prices went up. Russia also subsidizes their, 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 their citizens uh, in terms of uh, petroleum products. And even when they are talking about uh, phasing out subsidy due to the ongoing uh, crisis in Ukraine, they're doing it gradually. No, you know, so they're telling the, 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 the major oil marketers that, look, we may eventually phase out this subsidy by more than 50%. They didn't just come out and say, you know what, subsidy is gone, and that's it. So this is what Nigerians are saying. We are saying, let the government talk to us. Let the government carry us along. Let the government show that we're in all this together. It shouldn't be like, oh, uh because the way i'm looking at this subsidy now is I, I can't wrap around i can't wrap my head around the fact that i'm thinking it's more or less like a tax now and the way i look at it is 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 the average nigerians that are going to be responsible for paying this tax and mostly because uh, uh the the, gov- the the debt to gdp ratio is so high now that we can't continue borrowing to subsidize uh, uh, the fuel so if that is the case, then how can we look for other sources of, uh, of cutting government spending? Subsidy should not be this, uh, the sole scapegoat. And I think that's the angle we should be looking at it from. I'm willing to give this new government the benefit of the doubt because this policy was not made by them. The policy was made by the previous administration through the uh, uh, PIA, and also, uh, due to lack of provision for subsidy beyond uh, June. So essentially, what this government just did is to announce it and to continue the implementation. Uh, uh, Abdul, Abdul yeah. yeah, I think I, I completely agree with all you've said. Just the last part, let me just address, I agree with you that, let me make it, you've, you've, you've touched a few things you know you are touching, right? Yeah. Number one, the subsidy removal is a tax. It's a tax on government inefficiency because the government cannot get you cheap or should we say cannot get cannot make NNPC provide PMS without going bankrupt. That's number one. Number two, this government, right, the policy of subsidy removal, that's why I defined the terms at the very beginning. When you say subsidy removal, then we are putting it into this box and we are not getting a real intent of what's going on. What they are doing is removing the regulated price. They are removing the regulated price. The policy was not done by the last administration, nor was it done by the one before then. 
It wasn't a long time ago in Nigeria. In Nigeria, a long time ago, we regulated everything. The price of air travel, the price of water, the price of everything was regulated. And petrol has stayed. So when the refineries went bad a long time ago, not 80 years or 60 years ago, they went bad in the military regime. Because the price of PMS was regulated, then there had to be a subsidy for the import. So right now, fast forward to today, when people say that there is no provision in the budget for subsidy, there has never been a provision for subsidy in any budget. I challenge anyone to show me in the last budget where there's been a provision for subsidy. How has subsidy been paid for? The NNPC pays for the subsidy. You only saw it in the budget because they passed the PIA and NNPC was then saying that they were going, they were owing the federal government this differential between what they were paying over charging the government for subsidy. The NNPC pays for subsidy. NNPC is not in the federal budget. The mm. NNPC is not in the federal budget. So people say there's no provision. You put a provision there, then you take it off. It wasn't there before now. <laughs> so I'm changing this on. Go back to the budget and show me in, say, 2015, where it says fuel subsidy. It's never there. So when we now say it was not put in the budget, it was never in the budget. The, what the government simply said was that they passed PIA, which made that NNPC Limited is now a quote-unquote private company. And if it's a private company, then the balance sheet is going to be separate from the federal government, right? Hence, the NNPC said in 2019 or so, in 2021, subsidy will go. But they allowed it for one more year which was 2022. So in this year, 2023, they said they're only going to pay for subsidy for six months. That they're going to support the NNPC for six months. But subsidy has not been in the budget in the past. It's paid for by the NNPC. So if you want to pay for subsidy going forward, you can. You can. And like you rightly said, sir, it has got to be a graduated thing. You advise the country we are going to remove subsidy payments or work over remove the regulated price. Here, this is the subsidy. It will go out over four years. And this is how we are going to fund it. That's how we should do it. But the, it, it shouldn't be an excuse to say there is no money in the budget. There was never money in the budget at all to pay for subsidy. NNPC is not in the federal budget. Right. Thank, thanks for that uh, clarification. Just to round up so that I don't uh, hold the mic for too long. So well, one thing I noticed from the previous uh, administration is that they were very uh, liberal in terms of, uh, um, you know, welfare programs. We know about the creation of the uh, humanitarian ministry, you know, and their programs. We know about the uh, NPOWER. We know about the Angkor Boras program. So essentially what I'm saying is th these programs exist at the moment, right? So do you think these programs have a role to play in terms of uh, these uh, quote-unquote palliatives that we are talking about, uh, you know, yeah. trying to cushion the uh, impact of this uh, subsidy that is now gone? Do, do you think they have any key role to play? Because the president has made it clear that obviously there is need to increase the minimum wage but we know what happened when the previous government increased the minimum wage. Many people are still not uh, keeping to this minimum wage. So that uh, minimum wage in itself is not really uh, uh, something that is going to benefit majority. Maybe government workers, because of course the government will implement its own policy. But what about the private sector? What about the informal sector? Are they going to keep to this minimum wage? No, so these are the questions I'm thinking about, and how, how do you think yeah. uh, we can go through this going forward? Two great questions. No, so number one, the, the 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 social the Ministry of Humanitarian was charged with this social um, security payments and all that. They did not do a good job, I and mean, that was a lost opportunity, right? Many people believe that that ministry is very arbitrary, 
that they just announce money, but the money doesn't really get to a lot of the of the quote unquote poor people. There's nothing wrong with the idea. We're trying to copy or we're trying to do the social security scheme or social welfare scheme. But I just think it's not that transparent. And I think they lost the opportunity of the goodwill of the population. And it's not hard to do this, right? Uh, to have a social registrar, we have NIN, we have biometrics, so people can see where the money is going to. So that's one part there. If this government can go back to that scheme, you know, clean it up, appoint someone that is very, very trusted, and roll it out and say, okay, if you earn, you have to file taxes. If you file taxes and you say you earn this income below this median benchmark, then you qualify to receive social security benefits, unfunded social security benefits, or funded from payroll taxes. We can do that, and we can have that scheme up and running. Even if it's to start with 1 million people, start there, then build it up. We cannot say everybody must pay market prices in a capitalist society. It's not going to work for everyone. That's rule number one. Minimum wage that you talk about, Economists, or should we say capitalists, don't like it because when you price in, if you price wage, you are then saying that when you price minimum wage, you're actually going to reduce employment because some capitalists will say, oh, I can't afford to pay this, so I will pay less. I personally think you should have a minimum wage to say below this level, you cannot employ anybody if you're not going to pay him below this level just for, you know, just for social contract. You can't have people earning less than a dollar a day because you have the right to pay them a dollar a day. So the minimum wage clearly has got to go up. The question is always, how do you pay for this? And the answer is right in front of us. You can pay for the minimum wage by cutting back the fat and the waste that is currently in the federal government. Look at National Assembly. I saw their budget, was it last year? National Assembly's allocation is more than the universal basic education's allotment. How does that make any sense? The National Assembly earns more or is allocated more than the universal basic education. So cut all that fat away. Sell all those presential AFDs. Okay, keep one or two. Sell those things, cut down the cost of doing business and plow it back into paying minimum wage increase for the junior workers. So you can see level 0 to level 12, maybe they're going to increase their wages for now. And if the economy improves, then we're going to increase the wages for the upper uh, tiered workers. But there has got to be something to be done with minimum wage. Inflation is 22%. 22%. And minimum wage has not moved since when it was announced of 30,000 naira. So you don't have to be a math wizard to see that we have got to pay people more. It's, you don't have to be a math wizard, right? And we have to do this by asking ourselves, where can we get the money from to pay people? There's money in Nigeria. People don't pay taxes, so tax them. You know, you have homes in Abuja, do tenement rates. You, ca you can't hide your house. It's right there. Ch who owns this house? Tax the house and pay. There are many ways to raise revenues. Cut down the waste, tax the rich, and transfer some of those monies to the poor uh, people in Nigeria to survive. We can't build an economy where the poor cannot feed. That's not, you can't build a society that way, where the poor cannot feed. You heard this guy say there's petrol in Kiruna, but nobody's buying. So if, is, is nobody buying because they don't have money? Yes, they don't, they don't have money. So when you come and say people have money, but they're not showing it, if they had the money, they will buy the 500 and fuel, but they don't have the money. That's why they're not buying. IK, I've got you, sir. Mr. IK. Okay, IK. IK, what's up, man? So I'm going to shut down the space and, and, and spit it because the, the, the technical issues on the space today is a bit low. We might have to do the exact same topic next week. Yeah, but the tech issues today, audio is very, very poor. I can't add a lot of people. It's just the space. I don't know what's going on with them, right? So, I can, you've got the floor. You can go ahead and speak. When you're saying we'll try to wind it down, and maybe next week we'll do on that take on the same topic because I'm sure this week we'll have more information that we can then speak on. So, I can go the floor, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. What's up, man? Oh, good. Um, good evening, my fellow speakers, my listeners. In fact, you said it all. I, on the issue of subsidy removal, I think the way it was removed was was bad. Yes, it was bad. And I will keep saying it because 
the subsidy removal, even though um, majority of Nigerians wants it, I feel that that is not the only place we are wasting money. In the way we run our government offices today, there's too much of waste from the National Assembly. There's too much of waste. We are wasting funds there. I mean, you can, can, can they even think about subsidizing security to start with? We're talking about fuel. We are losing lives every day. Today, there was attack in Zamfara. You should think about people's lives. This fuel that they remove the subsidy is affecting lives. Look at people trekking. People are suffering. The masses are suffering it. The minimum wage we've talked about, 30,000 naira, is nothing com compared to what the economy of today is. In fact, they should change the name for minimum wage to minimum living wage to maybe 200,000 naira and above. Let it be living wage. Minimum living wage so people can understand because it's too poor. It's too poor. People, that, I don't know if the, the country just keeps making people poor daily and only the rich keep going higher. For crying out loud. They employ people all over the police section, the armed forces, the military, and there about. What is the salary scale? Now, they've increased, they've, incre they've removed fuel subsidy. Everything is shooting up. It's affecting food. Everything, everything, the price is changing. And nobody can talk for us, whether your salary or whatever. It remains there. I was complaining the other day with a friend, and the president said that the president is not NAMAC or what, 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 RAMFAC, or what do you call them? So we should remain, we should just be waiting for that fact. Is it not the president to give directive? For crying out loud, the subsidy removal was, for me, is wrong. There are proper ways to remove the subsidy. There are proper, you can move it gradually, but not just outrightly. You should be calculative in removing this thing, for crying out loud. I mean, check the waste. I feel so bad anyway for the subsidy removal. I must, I must tell you my mind. So bad about it. Uh, honestly. It's 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 bad for our country. Yeah, I don't want people to give the excuse of of FAC or NAC or budget. I'm just saying, in any in any ecosystem, in any ecosystem, you can't increase prices by two hundred percent immediately. In any ecosystem, government, private sector, church, mosque, even in your own house, you can't just tell your your child, "I used to give you two hundred naira before, now I'm going to give you one naira." It, it you there's no way it's done. In any exactly. ecosystem, you can't simply say, we know subsidy is corruption. We know. But let me you put that saying immediately. Don't we know the pots are corrupt? Don't we know the police are corrupt? Okay, let's crap the entire police force tonight. And let's build a new police force. Since we know police are corrupt, let's crap the entire police today. And let's start building a new, brand new police from tomorrow. Would anyone think that's a smart idea? No, because who police the streets in, 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 in the country? So you do it gradually. You say we're going to recruit new work, new police people. They're going to replace and phase out existing police force over time. In any ecosystem. So the argument of it has to go. No. Budget argument, it was not in the budget before. I'm looking at the budget now, right now. Show me your budget, your federal budget, where you saw subsidy before PIA. Show it to me. And if you say, okay, there's now PIA. Okay, but there's still PIA. Then why do you still have um, regulated prices? Is the PIA being implemented? It's not being suspended. It's been suspended, right? So what is your? I mean, <sighs> I can't. I can't remember his name. One can can defo. One can defo. Hey, can you hear me? I can defo. Hey, could you guys should be having simple Twitter names? So how you doing? <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. So I just wanted to add some things to what you said. Um, you talked about palliatives and raising minimum wage, which doesn't make sense to me. And I'll say why. With the history of raising minimum wage, everything that follows is always inflation and prices goes up. So when you talk about palliatives, I always hear minimum wage, minimum wage, that's all. But nobody talks about the long-term effect of raising minimum wage. Nobody talks about um, who benefits when minimum wage is raised. I was following you online when you talked about banks not paying people enough money. If you raise the minimum wage, we know the banks will not raise their salary. We know that things, price of things are going to go up. So in essence, taking out the subsidy and raising minimum wage is robbing Peter to pay Paul in the long term. Because at the end of the day, the prices will still go up and we still have to raise minimum wage and it follows each other back to back to back. 
So it's not really solving the problem. I heard the politician saying, oh, I will have done it gradually and I will have put in palliatives. Everyone keeps saying palliatives and minimum wage, but that is not the solution. Yes, we need to take out subsidy, but no minimum wage won't solve the problem. Okay, so question so, for you, which, which one has come first in Nigeria, inflation or minimum wage increase? Um, it's like they follow each other back to back. Yeah, but so when the minimum wage like, goes up, inflation follows immediately. Okay, so okay, so have we increased the minimum wage in Nigeria since was it twenty sixteen? Have we increased it since twenty sixteen? No, we haven't. Has inflation gone up? Definitely. Okay. So the answer So raising that, the minimum wage won't solve the problem, or okay? what I, I'm, I'm trying not, to I'm say. Not, I'm, I'm not saying it will. I'm saying okay. inflation has gone up. On an okay. annual basis, it's going up by 20% annual basis. That means that the salary you earned in 2015 has been cut down to, say, half today. Okay. But the minimum wage, the official wage in Nigeria has not gone up. So even if, before we even argue, should we increase the minimum wage or not, the point is that your wage has been eaten by inflation. Before we even argue how much has been eaten, it has been eaten already. So we have to try to match prices. Fuel has gone from what? 67 Naira to what? 200 Naira. Forget this new increase. To 200 Naira. 67, 200 Naira. Okay. The rate has stayed the same. So what should okay. the workers do? What, tell me what the workers should do. That's that's the very that's what I said is a very very complicated thing. It's not just by raising minimum wage. Raising minimum wage alone would not solve the problem. Like I said, it's going to cause inflation. Yeah, but no, now, no one has wait, no, no wait one hold has on, said. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just say something. There were times we can actually take out the subsidy, and the best time to take out subsidy is when the oil price crashed. During COVID 2016, those were the best times to take out subsidy then let the price go up at the same time the oil prices are going up. Now, this is trying to quench fire when the house is 90% burnt because very soon China will start coming for us and start taking over our, our ports and airports and uh, seaports and everything. So what I'm trying to say is um, everyone has keep saying um, raise minimum wage, raise minimum wage. It's not going to solve the problem. Everyone keeps saying palliatives, but nobody's mentioning the long-term effect of these things. It's not a silver bullet that kills everything. We'll raise the minimum wage and everything is solved. It won't solve nothing. We are a broke country. We are not like the Saudis. We are not like the Dubai the Emirates. We are an oil-producing company, but country, sorry, but we are broke. And we should realize that. We should stop looking at other countries and realize that we are poor and cut our coat according to our size. That's all I have to say. This idea of, oh, let's keep this thing and keep, you know, going back and forth on raising minimum wage and we should cut um, subsidy or not cut subsidy, it doesn't matter. We are not a rich country. We are over 200 million um, uh, Nigerians and we are producing oil for the size of a small country. Algeria is Algeria, our neighbors in the north. There are like 30 million people producing the same amount of fuel with us, the same amount of sorry oil with us, but still they are not that rich. And we are expecting to be rich like the Saudis. No, we are not. That's all we should do. Yeah, Cut our course according to our size and realize that we are a I poor you, country. Let, let, That's I, all I, I have I, to I say. You, you, you've made your point, but I'm asking you simple questions, right? Okay. If inflation, no one has said that increasing the minimum wage. Is going to solve any problem. We are okay. saying increasing the minimum wage takes your wage to where it was before any problem even started from. Do you agree with that? I agree with you. That's what we're saying. So, Infl but min minimum wage does not cause inflation. If you increase the minimum wage, inflation occurs if there is no productivity. So, when I, you wonder, I wage, disagree with you on that. Okay, 100%. but I can give you history. Under Udoji, Udoji Award, Nigeria increased, not only increased minimum wage, they paid a lot of money. What happened? There was inflation. Why? Because there was nothing to buy. There was a lot of money and nothing to buy. That's when you had the armada of cement ships in Lagos. I had a, a okay. guy told me, the guy used to work for mm -hmm. the air conditioning factory 
in Nigeria where they used to sell air conditioner. He told me that, right? People will come to their shop and bribe the salespeople to keep air conditioners or fridge for them. There was so much money in Nigeria that you couldn't buy a fridge. No, it wasn't available. Anyone they imported was sold. So people will come to the store and bribe the shop attendant. Please keep one for me. That's why there was inflation because of the productivity. Now, let me give you an example. If you go to the onion market in Jigawa, it does not matter the minimum wage or the monetary policy or whatever you do. The price of onions will not go up. Why? There are onions in Jigawa. There are no onions in Lagos. That's why there's inflation of food in Lagos. There's no supply of onions in Lagos. Inflation occurs when you have cash moving in velocity in the economy and there is no productivity. Today in Nigeria, the SMEs are not producing. So rice is not available. That's why food prices are going up. Not because of the cash in your pocket chasing the rice. There's just no rice to buy. You heard the guy tell you today, there's petrol in Kaduna, nobody's buying. Okay, so do do you want me to say something about inflation now? Because I let you talk. Good. So when you raise the minimum wage, what happens? There'll be a lot of money around. And when a lot of money is around, guess what happens? People have money to splurge on more things. And guess what happens? The prices go. So the cash starts chasing the goods. That is not true. That is what Why is it not true? That's the definition of inflation. There's so much money and there's not enough goods. That no, is inflation. That is what teacher... No. No. That's what is. What are you telling me? Okay, so what they taught me in school is wrong. Are yes. you the expert now? No. Jesus Christ. Okay, don't worry. It's your, it's your forum. I won't argue with you, but I just made my point here. The U.S. It's okay. Printed trillions, trillions of dollars. I gave out PPP loans to people. I gave out money. They shared money in the U.S. And that what happened to the U.S. Inflation went up. At 9% at some point. The US printed two trillions of dollars under quantitative easing from 2007. Interest rates in America were 0%. Trillions were printed. There was no inflation in America. Go and pull up the data. Quantitative easing printed trillions was introduced into the American economy and there was no inflation. Why? Because America is able to import cheaper and that soaks up the excess capital. Inflation is simply not the increase in cash. It is when that cash has nowhere to go moving with velocity in the economy, then it causes what you then call cost push or demand push, inflation. If you give everybody in Nigeria an increase, double increase in salary, and you increase the production of goods and services in Nigeria, they will take their cash and buy the goods and you will not have inflation. Inflation occurs when there are no goods and services, when there is no productivity to soak up that cash. America printed dollars. Zimbabwe printed dollars. Zimbabwe has inflation. America has no inflation. Pull up the data. It's not to say am I the expert. Pull up the data. If you go to any food state in Nigeria where food is produced, it does not matter the amount of currency in that state because the supply of that food product is surplus in that state. There is no food inflation in that state. Go to Benue, yam is available. Go to Onhafia, cassava is available. The problem is taking it from Benue or Abia to the markets in Lagos. It's not a currency printing problem. It's a supply problem. 
what the economists call cost push inflation. Two types of inflation. All right, sir. Who we got here? All right, so I think we'll start to wind it down. Just because, just because since the audio is a bit low. Let's do this again, I guess. Um, let's start to wind down. An hour, 30 minutes. We've been here about 12, 30 minutes. So the point I'm making, guys, it's... Let's summarize. Let's sort of summarize what we've talked about. Let's sort of summarize what we've talked about today. Uh, number one, the subsidy itself is inefficient. It's a waste and it's a drag on government revenues. No argument. So the subsidy is a waste and a drag. The government is broke, so the government says they can no longer pay subsidy. That's fine. The only issue I believe Nigerians have today is that it's taken off immediately. So it has made prices, or should we say the cost of living in Nigeria, go up significantly. This has then reduced the purchasing power of their fixed income. Because they have a fixed income, but they are unable to spend that same fixed income on the same goods and services. So, yes, there's petrol now, but nobody is buying because we have to choose between food and school fees and petrol. So what do we do? We default to on our scale of preference to what is or important to us, food and school fees. If this continues and then no one is spending because we cannot afford it, then the economy starts to contract and starts to shrink. Who can get the economy out of a contraction? The same government. The same government has got to come back in and expand the economy by spending or by giving a tax cut to spenders. It can give an expansion of incomes to the lower class employees in Nigeria to say, we're going to increase your salary. And it can give a tax cut to the Dangotes to say, we want you guys to spend more money on capital investments with this tax cut. So if you simply increase costs without providing a palliative, I eat, I'm talking to the government now, you are going to contract the same economy you want to tax in future to pay for your growth. So it might not make sense to do that. You might want to consider removing the subsidy, but giving what they call in Nigeria palliatives to ensure that folks can still consume. If I earn a hundred thousand, how do I go to work? If you will, it's 500 naira a liter. How? Explain it to me. So this is, I think, the, the impact on your wallet. The government has a part to play in reflating the economy. If the economy contracts, they will spend more to reflate the economy than doing a proper plan to phase this in and also to phase the palliatives in. You can't, in any ecosystem, increase income or costs by 200%. It just can't take it. All right, guys, on that note, uh, let me thank you all for joining us. Yeah, a bit of issues with the audio today because I don't know what's happening with spaces today, but we'll definitely, definitely try to do this again. I put you in next week. Same topic. But I hope by then would have had uh, a lot more, shall we say, uh, more information from the governments. Maybe one or two guys would have appointed and will listen to the NNPC guy a bit more to get more a better sense of where, what they're talking about to allow us to make, reach a more informed decision. But as it stands, if you allow just this price increase to stay without the corresponding income support, the economy is going to contract it's maths it's just pure maths all right guys thank you so much uh, you guys have a wonderful rest of your evening and bye to you